<laughs> Welcome to the Ride Companion 76, where we have star guest. Wow. World Cup enthusiast. Racer. And expert. Former racer. <laughs> That's the worst intro I've ever yeah. done. I got I got stuck halfway through. I was gonna look at my fucking things, but holy, yeah. Welcome to the show. Sorry about that, David. Going Sorry about swinging that. today. I feel like people are like, yeah, I can't listen to this. This is like, <laughs> <laughs> should we start again? <laughs> Welcome to the Ride Companion seventy six. Thanks for joining us, Andrew Neathling here today. Round of applause. What um. What constitutes an enthusiast? That might be the first time I've been named an enthusiast. <laughs> I don't know. I, I wanted to say expert, but it's felt weird. Expert's no, good. I, I enthusiast. Yeah. What, I don't care for what any What is an term. MTB enthusiast? No, I don't. I think we're all cycling enthusiasts. Aren't we, we don't like oh, labels. I, so. I don't really need labels, do we? But enthusiast might be. Oh, a first. all right then. Might be first. Come on, he is modern. Modern. Yeah, modern guy. Non-binary bicycle enthusiast. <laughs> no, don't even start. No, absolutely not. <laughs> We say it like it is. I am an enthusiast. I am an absolute enthusiast, aren't I? A passionate yeah, well, enthusiast it, fan of the sport. This is the. You must be because this is. How many times have you been on on here, on the ride companion? Oh wow, a few now. Or subsequent. Yeah, you've been on loads, no. dude. So you must be is enthusiastic this, about the is sport. This the third otherwise, one? we don't really cover much. <laughs> I, know, I like you guys. <laughs> We bring you in to actually cover some mountain bike news. Like we're like, oh, we really should talk about bikes sometime. Let's bring needles in. Well, when you don't want to <laughs> talk, talk about, about what we've been doing, big bike chat lately. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You've been knocking them out of the park. T- talking of like bike content. Yeah. You've had some guests on lately, huh? Yeah. Dude. I, can I, I t- shouldn't really start our podcast plugging yours, but... Well, no, did, we did say I in the terms say, and conditions, yeah, I'm not the needles coming, coming on. on, there needed to be a plug. So, no. within the first five minutes, you said as well. Is that what was in the contract? Was it the first Jeez, five no, minutes? I think now I've got to pay you guys. No, I um, I was actually going to just... I was giving Davy shit, but at the same time, I'll never say no, because the only reason I have a podcast, shameless plug, is because of Davy and, and oh, his really help. Kind of so you, that was I appreciate cool. that. Our that's not, David. It's not the only reason at all. Mate, like, can I tell you the... Not. I think one of my highlights of 2022 is, it's not a guest, but it could be a guest, is I was texting back and forth with Sean Palmer on Instagram. Whoa, dude, that's cool, is yeah. it weird that's that I was like, to a, know. dude, I was fucking giddy. And I've met the guy, I've hung out with him like a bunch. And uh, I was still like fucking super surreal, just texting back and forth, talking e-bikes and all sorts of shit. Just normal shit. Normal, normal. Like everyone wants him on my podcast. Like, when are you getting on? When are you? and I was, mm. it's not about that. Like if he would ever want to come on, I would lovely. I'd, I'd fucking do it. But the texting part was pretty cool because he comes up in so many of the older races, like conversations, inspiration, mm. like the banter from back in the day. Um, and I and I guess we were going to talk about some of that. Is like where the sport is now, where it's going. But if you don't know where it came from, how you know, like then what sort of compass do you have? Yeah. Yeah, true. He um, he dropped the biggest shit in our office. I think I've ever like the biggest skid marks were left behind after after Sean Palmer visited Hookett's old offices. He was in there. What do you mean? Doing what? Yeah, was he really? Yeah, you remember a few years ago, probably like six or seven years ago, when he first joined. Did he not join Intense? And he went on like a whole UK yeah, tour. Yeah, yeah. Maybe even a global tour of visiting distributors, and he was like, you know, going out promoting stuff. Well, obviously, he stayed up at Petey's house. Uh, our old offices were around the corner from Steve's house and he, he called in. Uh, my business partner, Mark, went out riding with him. He just needed a shit, didn't he? Yeah, he just dropped I can't believe biggest... this is the Sean Palmer story. Of all the I Sean ain't got Palmer any more. Stories, you can... <laughs> 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 oh, shame. You know, I should have... I've got one more. I'll give... I've got one more than most people and that is it. That is it. That's but... the only thing I've got. He just dropped a massive shit. Shows you what a legend he is. Even Davy remembers that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I bet he, I bet he backstreet boyed it. You know, he like reverse cowgirl it. <laughs> he just sat down. He knew he was gonna leave skidders. He just, <laughs> just you know what I mean. Just went for it, mate. Just yeah. left full rut mark straight down the back of the bog. <laughs> oh dear, it's funny. But do you reckon? Do you reckon you can get him on needles? Do you reckon it's the thing? Maybe. I, I love that he's using Instagram, but not. I don't think he posts too much, does he? No man, he's just flying on the radar. Like I, I, I yeah. get, I get wind of what he's up to through through some of the old guys that know him well, and uh, I ain't gonna ask mm. because like it needs to come from him if he would want to tell some of those stories. But it mm. it sounds like he doesn't do you know doesn't do podcasts, and that's totally cool. Not everyone does, right? There's yeah. some interesting guys I've had chats with, and, and I've been bugging them, and they're like, no, no, I don't. Re-. I'm like this conversation we just had 
is so valuable to so many people out there you know like yeah but yeah like that is a but, podcast um, it's just the same as talking but <laughs> yeah yeah well, no, 100%. there's no need to like a lot of the time yeah, there's no need like to put it on a pedestal is there it's like let's just yeah. literally and um chat and that's it yeah because like Stickman was on it and he was back in the day when palm was on the circuit ec lopes all these guys and and I'd love to give him the opportunity to just like talk about the days, talk about what he's been up to, you know, like things are not easy for someone that was at that level. Like he was a mm, guy that won yeah. at all costs. There's a lot of guys that In multiple sports, yeah, multiple as well, sports. Huh? like this is, this is better than Michael Jordan and, and, and stuff like that. If you think about it, cause he, I bet, but, Oh yeah. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Well, did Michael Jordan, okay. <laughs> but did he cross over to baseball successfully or not? I mean, he played, didn't he? Yeah, uh, in yeah, the highest league. Sean Palmer didn't just play; he won at the highest level. No, no. In there you go. There you sports. go. The ne- needles. Yeah. There you go. That's I true. like it. I like your angle. So what things did Palmer do? So he obviously I don't know, my goat. Yeah, he, he obviously Palmer was you know downhill, the uh, dual slalom. I guess he called it back then. Yeah, but you got to remember. Into... No, st- no. He was famous and one of the biggest snowboarders in the world. And yeah. then in so, the summer, so which way round did he go? Did he go first. from snow to mountain? Or, uh, oh, famous did, yeah. in right. snowboard first snowboard. and then came over to mountain biking and downhill. But he obviously rode yeah. bikes and BMXs and motocross and all this shit. It wasn't just... Yeah, it was like everyone thought Aaron Gwynn just came out of nowhere and was a downhill superstar. Well, <laughs> he rode all these things, raced motocross, rode BMX as a kid, you know, and then, you know, took all those skill sets. So, and the same as Palmer, like, for him to, mm. he's not going to be nervous in the gate. He's done a million snowboard. He made things. a main event, didn't he? Make a main event, a supercross main. Oh shit! And then he tried to, yeah, and then he tried to yeah. dabble in motocross as well. I'm sure he qualified yeah. for a national. I don't know if he made a supercross main. I'm pretty sure he. No, I really. Look at this for guy. He's still coming up in your podcast. He comes up in mine like every second one. Um, mm. Anyway, yeah. I really, I, I think I feel like from the outside looking in, he's a guy now who really knows his worth. To, and, and what he even now obviously will bring to your podcast or whatever sort of like media outlet that he puts his name to or product that he puts his name to. I don't know. Is that, would you would you say that's true? I, I can't I can't speak for him, man. I don't know what no. he wants to get out of life, the industry now after, um, you know, there's been drips and drabs of what he's been up to and, and where yeah, he's he did make, and, like I say, a bit of a like comeback, didn't he? He came back and was doing the intense thing a little bit, doing the rounds for that. Didn't he run a yeah. race team for a little while as You're well? Right, yeah. Well, he came back and, and, and wanted to race a bit and then mentor the, the intense race team, which he did. And I think that would have been really good for him. I don't know the ins and outs. That's why it'd be lovely to chat yeah. to him and say, like, how did it go? How did it feel for you? But you've got to imagine for someone that was so successful and so competitive like normal life's got to be pretty subpar if i was mm. to guess like there's a lot of self-reflection he's got to go through to like deal with normal life and not being like oh man the superstar yeah. he was i mean one of his quotes was yeah like he won he won this world cup and it was in the documentary or was in one of the videos and he's he's like this feeling no billionaire yacht owning motherfucker will ever feel like this like and 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 he and it's true it's like it's this to be the best in the world at something and i can't speak to that but i've been on a podium where you're like almost the fastest around that anyone's ever seen on a bike or a snowboard could you imagine what that actually feels like now your self-worth can't come from that because then afterwards what do you have right but um that's why people chase drugs after a career that's why you know totally Totally. These four from I've told the story a few times on happen. on here that I used to hang out with like a lot of speedway riders and speedway is ultimately one of the most dangerous sports on earth you know you go in 90 mile an hour with no brakes you know round a corner with you know sliding and when that season ends the riders are just lost it's like where do you get that any like that adrenaline from and you go on this mad like you say drunk drinking drugs whatever it could be trying to fill that void that you don't get and I think many people who are into action sports or whatever it could be feel that as well, right? Like, no matter what level either, I don't think you have to be the best in the world to go, fuck, like, I need an adrenaline hit from somewhere. I need to, like, chase that dragon again a little bit. <coughs> it, it's also more than just winning, I think. It's like that kind of... 
when someone's like on a roll, especially when they're more than just uh, more than just a race winner, they're a character <laughs> and they're a personality. It's like everything they touch. Mm. Like with Palmer, almost literally, because he wore the gold suit, but it turns to gold, doesn't it? So it's like everything, everyone you talk to is handing out freebies, is hooking you up, is you're on this private jet, you're going to this party. It just and and for it to all stop must be it's something that absolutely I can't even begin to, and it's and it's inevitable. That's what's crazy about it, isn't it? It's like mm. completely inevitable, and no one teaches you how to deal with it. So. To be like him and to to have that across different sports, and then inevitably it comes to an end. I'd, it'd be so interesting. You should. Yeah. yeah. You'd do a better job of interviewing them. I would. Yeah. That's for sure. I'd be giggling like a school. No, but it's <laughs> uh, it's like you. But you said a few things. Like no one prepares you for it, but it is inevitable. It's going to end, and the same happens on. And I'm not comparing myself, but I went through that, and it's six years after retiring yeah. from doing anything, and we. It comes up so much on the podcast. No one prepares you for it. It's so difficult. It's so hard. Like. You, so everyone wants something from him. Everyone wants to fucking stroke his ego and give him, pay him to do shit, yeah. right? And then that dries up. And that's why people are like, oh, you're going to get him on the podcast. No, I don't want anything from him. If he wants to tell his story and he thinks it's something he would, would be open to doing, then absolutely, I would literally love to do that. But it's like yeah, yeah. he comes up so often that I feel the need that it could be cool to do it. But I don't want to ask him for mm. something. I don't, I don't want anything from him. Like... Because everyone wanted yeah, something is from him in the day. Everyone like he had probably friends that abused his generosity with money. He had you know all sort of people that like why were they friends with him? Why were they hanging around? And now, what do you have? Right when everything's gone, you've got to kind of find yourself, find your true friends. And I think the mountain bike community are those people that I spoke to EC about it. And like they they still chat because everyone's gone through a similar thing. EC's dealing yeah. with yeah. You know, adventure dries up. It's inevitable, Ollie. Like, sponsors dry up. They don't even want to, you know, people that were so stoked to have you on the product they, and pay you, they won't even send you a free set of tires. Like, it's business. Eventually, the budgets dry up. And I think that's quite mm. a harsh reality to go through, especially like you said, if you were like this character. I mean, there can't be a guy that changes the sport as much as him. I just don't think, I just don't think there is. Mm. Yeah. No. It's, it's hard to imagine. It's obviously, like you said, Needles, it's something you've, you know, navigated through as well, and no doubt you've got tons of advice for people. Listen to this, or that you mentor, or that you, you you know you meet out on the World Cup circuit and stuff, because it is important, isn't it? That when all this stops, like what what do you do? Where do you go? How do you f- fulfill that? Yeah, that I don't know that hole that's missing. Like you said, people are always pandering to you. People are probably always wanting you to do this, do that, use this product. Here's a bit of money. Like it, I don't know. I, again, obviously, I've never experienced that at all, but. I don't know, I guess in a weird way, a lot of people probably do when they retire from work because all of a sudden, yeah. like, your purpose is, is gone. Yeah, you know? And I, I, I've kind of witnessed that, for, you know, again, it's different, but it's kind of similar. It's witnessed my parents go through that. You, you have this thing that you do all the time, whether it is riding a bike or if it's going to work, and then all of a sudden it's gone and you're like, shit, like, what do I actually like? Yeah. What's my actual purpose here? Dude, and, if you've, and uh, if you've worked and been so busy and you haven't asked yourself those questions, like, that's a harsh reality. Say you... Mm saved up all this money to then retire to what sail around the world at 60. I've been listening to this, this guy and he wrote a book on like dying with zero, he calls it. And he's all about solving for fulfillment. Now, Ollie can probably relate because I think Ollie's a really well balanced person on like fun. I do things if it, if it fulfills me and yeah, I get paid, but I want to do what I want. Exactly. And Mm. he's all Mm. about like, okay, say you save up all this money. It's not really a guarantee you get to 60. And at the same time, if you thought you were going to go on two snowboarding trips once you hit 60 because you got all the money, like, are you going to enjoy snowboarding when you're 60 versus when you're 35 and your body's able to enjoy snowboarding? And I was like, oh, my God. No one's ever described it like that, right? Um, And that's just like a – and I think your thing of, like, comparing it to people that retire, if you're not aware, like, why you're retiring that late – what are you going to mm. do with your time? What does fulfill mm. you? If you've just been working and raising kids, you probably don't even know what the hell you enjoy these days. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's true. It's a- yeah, absolutely. And just like the frequency of it all as well. Sorry, David. No, no, off. no. Like, the, like how if you're successful at something, realistically, it's just a <laughs> the whole time, isn't it? Mm. Like, you're in well, a whirlwind. I, I can only imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like Palmer's, it would have been in a whirlwind for however many decades. Yeah. 
really, won't you? Yeah. And you've got to deal with that stopping as well, you know. That's a valid yeah. point because he's doing stop. doing winter and summer, right? For him as an example. Yeah. So like his off season was barely off season because it's like focus on winter and then it'll be focus on summer. But the, I think one of the biggest things people struggle with and people that quit a corporate job and become entrepreneurs or work for themselves is like schedule and, and what you do on that day. Like when you're an athlete, there's one job. You get up, you get better and that's hire a coach, train, boom. So then you finish, even if you've got money in the bank. The fuck do you do with your time? And people think, oh, I can't <laughs> believe that's a complaint. Uh, Needle thinks that's a bad thing. Trust me, that is a dangerous place for your mind as well, especially if you have the mm -hmm. money that you don't need to go out and get a job or get busy and find something that fulfills you. You've got to fill your time. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting, isn't it, man? Would you say it's something oh, that you have dealt with, like, and... Would you say you've struggled with it since retiring from racing? Who, me? Yeah, I would say that everyone yeah. says, oh, you've, you've transitioned well, or you've, it looks like it's all going well. Well, we all know that, you know, all things look good on social media, they look good on the outside. But the mental battle of those things I mentioned are extreme, man. Extreme. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if we don't speak about it, people don't get to learn from it. But yeah, that would be the biggest mental adjustment is what to focus on, when, how much. You know, yeah. uh, am I yeah. doing enough for these brands that I'm partnering with? And, and how do I improve that? But like racing is just so clear. Mm. What am I going to do today to get faster on a bike? Simple. Simple. Yeah. It's not much to yeah. it, is yeah. there? Yeah. yeah. I remember before social media when you'd come over, <clears throat> you know, during the season, you'd, you'd be over and or maybe pre-season do some training or before Fort William, wasn't it? Every year you'd come over. But because there wasn't social media, when the season ended, I used to really like envy you boys. I used to really like think, fuck, they've got nothing to do <laughs> yeah. until the first round. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. all they have to do is like, like chill and train. I didn't understand at the time. I was, I was like working on a building site. I was like, you know, to me, I, I had to get up at five in the morning and drive into London or whatever. So when I saw that you boys had finished your work, I was just... Mm. I don't know. I, it, there was something so like radio silence about like no social media as well. It was like the season's ended. We're in the off season. I remember the, the off season used to be such like a, oh, it's just like partying and fucking waking up late and all of that stuff. But the the more life has gone on, the more I've realised it's really not the case <laughs> at all. It's a, it's a lot less, I think, the sports evolved that the guys are having less of an off season. At least most top guys are. I had uh, mm. Matt Walker was out here with Greg Williamson. They were all in Lycra, mad training camp already. I was like, holy shit, wow. guys, it's December. The season only starts in June. How are you going to stay motivated? But they're going to do it in blocks. But anyway, yeah, Oli, you're right. I think because you sacrifice so much in the year, you know, you're saying no to dinners. You're saying no to family commitments. I'm a, I was away, right? So the off season was this huge relief. I was like, geez, I can be a normal person. My mate says he wants to go to the pub. I'll go to the pub. No guilt, no mm. nothing, right? And you let loose. But then quickly, you, that only lasts so long. You're like, fuck, I'm doing nothing yeah. with my life here. I better get my shit in the pile. And I think that's just something balanced. But I would imagine for you, so you've transitioned. You said you're on a building site. You've been a professional. You've also worked for companies like DMR. And, and now you're full-time, right? You're a full-time writer, podcaster. Have is yours do you ever battle with that like unfulfillment or not knowing what to do with a day i um n no not really but I, I i it definitely goes in like waves like i think um i feel the most happy when i'm like uh busy for sure so i so in that sense yes absolutely i can completely you know, if I wouldn't, if I wasn't busy, I would be like you stare into the, the the abyss, don't you? Like it's why even if I'm not busy, I go like digging, dude. I'll just do something. I'll like create. It's like job creation. I'll dig a new track because then that becomes all um, fulfilling. Yeah, uh, what would you would you? It becomes everything that you're thinking about and working towards. Mm. It sounds really stupid, but then you've got the new track that you're working towards. But is like, that because it then... it's good that you can stay motivated to do it though? Yeah. That's the thing because a lot of people don't like it. Is easy, isn't it? To yeah. just turn the TV on and think, you know what? I could go out and dig. It could, or but I don't have to because my and, like... sponsors don't even care. But yeah, like, but are you doing exactly? It, you're doing it obviously for like the physical, mental sort of side of it, but as well as hey, I could use this track for some content. For like, okay, we're gonna 
maybe I have to do a photo shoot for one of my sponsors. So definitely going to do a new track or a bit of GoPro or you just realize that digging in the woods is good for your mental health. I guess the latter. I think actually what it comes down to is like, uh, which definitely I'm, I'm weird, weird for, but it's like giving in is, I don't ever want to be lame regardless of what it is. So like, so yeah, like I, I don't want to go to the gym and I, and I go to the gym loads and I don't want to go digging always and I make myself do it. And I think like that in itself, just like making, you, making yourself do something that you don't necessarily feel like it's sort of quite a, quite a um, first world problem, isn't it? But it's like I'm creating my own hustle and like creating my own, um, like b- busying yourself essentially, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. It's like yeah, but it's yeah, and I think do it like you said, doing stuff that is hard and overcoming that. I I'd, I'd say that's like resistance sometimes in your brain. Yeah, you know, you're overcoming that resistance of like, okay, I don't want to go out and do that, but I'm gonna make myself do it because you kind of need to. It's like yeah, it's kind of going back to the whole military idea of get up and make your bed it's like the first thing you yeah. overcome something in the day and you you know you're living a true and moral life i think the inner bitch that's it yeah, the inner I, bitch, just yeah. facing it yeah you not this uh, uh bear claws was like the latest interview i did and we had a great chat um and he recommended and this is something i know about but it's called the comfort crisis and it's basically if you think about what we have to solve for for today Like there's an abundance of food. If you've got shelter and you've got sort of a job and money, then there's an abundance of food and there's an abundance of shit to watch on TV. So at what point do you even need to be uncomfortable in the day? He said, said, if it wasn't for air conditioning, how many of the cities around the world we wouldn't even live in? Vegas, Phoenix in America, right? You're just like, you're only uncomfortable for a split second between your house and the car. And you're in, you know, you're in all these air conditioned climates. You go to a gym. He's, he says, then you put on the news, which is obviously just mainstream pushing a narrative besides the point. Mm. But what he's getting to is that being uncomfortable teaches you so much stuff like, like resilience yeah. and, and how to deal with adversity, how to deal with fuck all sorts of things. Cause you're like, dude, I can get through way worse than this. And like back in the day, yeah. dude, if you needed food, it was fucking a two day trick to dig something out the ground or go and kill something. Otherwise, you weren't eating. You actually went hungry. Mm. At what point do you go hungry mm. in the modern day age? And that was what you spoke to. Going digging is like I think fucking it's super digging it out the too. dirt. And you're like, yeah, I appreciate riding my bike. Or no, I, yeah. I don't worry about X, Y, Z because I know, you know, I, I earned it today. It's just super yeah. important to put yourself through that stuff. It's something that personally I strive to i think we've talked about it a lot on here putting yourself through like brutal workouts or like making yourself go in the cold cold bath cold shower go cold swimming whatever it could be because then everything that comes up throughout the rest of the day or week or month you're like i can deal with that like i i made myself go in the cold this morning like, i can do anything moving forward and and we are in this weird comfort crisis is a great way of explaining it really that we do have it pretty easy let's be honest the fact that even we're sat here doing this now is is an absolute blessing it's 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 a lovely thing that we can do anyone listening to this no doubt is using a a piece of equipment that's really expensive so we're all living in this comfort environment and i, I remember listening to something a while ago it's slightly off topic but it was talking about we joked about it before we started recording about you know people going down the whole non-binary thing and like all these things that are sort of when it all boils down to it, it doesn't really matter. Like if you take away the access to food, like how much do you care about what pronoun people are using? You're like, no, I just need food, but I don't care if I'm whatever. All I need is food or shelter or warmth. And we are, you know, you go back World War One, whatever. People didn't give a shit about any of that stuff. They were just trying to survive. And now it's so easy to get by that we just sort of like make up stuff to make life yeah, you know, somewhat make of a challenge. Problems. Literally, you make yeah, up you problems. It's a product of luxury, isn't yeah. it? For sure, yeah. But it's an yeah, important thing to think about, like, especially towards the end of a year. For me, this time of year, I do like quite a lot of thinking and walking on my own and taking notebooks out and stuff like that to think about. Like you said, Andrew, like, where is this, where is it all going? Like, what is life for you? What do you want to achieve and why do you want to achieve those things? I think it's cool to go like, okay, yeah, I want to achieve a bigger house, whatever. I want a balcony. But like, why? You have to really like try and unpack it all. Like, why are you trying to get there? Is it just so you can post a photo on Instagram or is it because it's going like, to actually benefit your being on this planet? And are you going to like improve yourself from from having that stuff? Yeah, it's something that I'm thinking about loads at the minute. I've Because I struggle at the moment with it quite a lot, actually, that I think for me, maybe people will relate to this, that like life's been like such a grind for so many years, that even from starting this thing, you know, it was such a grind for years. And all of a sudden, 
not all of a sudden, but it's a little bit easier now. Like I'm a little bit more scheduled throughout my days. Like the days are pretty scheduled, but it does leave a little bit of spare time. And it's almost hard to know sometimes. You're like, fuck, like what do I do now? Do you feel guilty? I've got like... You feel guilty, you feel guilty? because it's oh, maybe mate, easier so than guilty. it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So how, how There's a bit of guilt attached shit? to it for sure. Yeah, really is a bit of guilt to it. And you know, that you can go out for a bike ride in the afternoon. It's a hard thing because a lot of your friends and stuff are out working <laughs> you're like yeah i can go for a ride this afternoon for a few hours and i, I struggle with it I've, I've been thinking about it a lot recently that you know it's it's yeah it's a weird it's, they say weird don't they, work, work, work expands to fill void time yeah that, you know you just pack you just keep packing working even though really you can you can give yourself the excuse to go out for a bike ride or go do something that you enjoy or why do you or want why to do. do you think that is do you think it's um societal pressure and like programming yeah like, I definitely, mean, you've definitely. I think that. we're programmed you've to this nine to five mindset. Yeah, and that's a made up construct. Totally, totally made up. It's not how we're meant to work. I don't feel. Yeah, and, and also you discover about yourself when you are good at working. Like for me, I'm not good at working between well, most of the afternoon. My brain just doesn't work. So yeah, I'm, better I'm I'm pretty shit between eight else. and five as well. Yeah, pretty bad. It's a bad time. For me. Eight and five. Yeah, yeah it's a big time. Between window, eight a.m. and seven a.m. the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> not a good. You're about to give everyone excuses not to work their arsehole. <laughs> yeah, I'm just not good at working from eight a.m. all the way to sleep. Really. <laughs> Do you know what I've found? Um, do you know what I, I, I think <coughs> that like finding that balance of like where you're the most happy or the most productive, it's always the same things, isn't it? So it's always like you're better at working, you're better at enjoying yourself, all of that. I almost think it's like, um, it's almost like Zoom, right? So you like, if you Zoom all the way out, you're completely insignificant. And if you Zoom all the way in, you're very significant. You're in fact the only thing that matters. And it's like the the idea of being able to go between that and find the exact spot i think that is when i'm most happy when i think about it yeah. i've been thinking about it since you said about digging i've been thinking mm. about it needles a long time then but like do you, do you understand what i mean so like we are all completely insignificant yeah also we are all very in, very significant you know our friends and families we're very important to our friends and our families and yeah the people around us so it's like somewhere in between there is the truth and it's like it's almost like a zoom isn't it if you zoom all the way out we're yeah you just literally dot on a what is spinning this rock. podcast yeah there's no point yeah i mean just, most of the cliches you know. are true for for a reason you know and that's i guess balance and and that's in all walks of life like if you're just chasing mm. A career and, and getting up the ladder but you're missing time with your kids and family you know there's yeah. got to be a balance there but if that does uh, and that can fulfill you i'm not against that some people that gets them up in the morning is business deals and and negotiation yeah. whatever it may be and there's nothing wrong with that right but you just kind of want to shake them and go i've been lucky enough to have more time on my hands and i understand what freedom does and shit okay balance is pretty good it's 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 a really important thing you want to shake them and go hey you ain't going to feel this way when you're on your deathbed at 60, right? All those sort of cliches. Yeah. You're not going to wish mm. you were working more. You're going to probably wish no, you no had way. a little no bit way. more balance. And it's more like, let's let's try spread that message, right? Like, And maybe yeah. ask yourself the harder question, which I've, I'm lecturing to myself. I'm like, fuck, I probably didn't do a year in review. What, you know, what did fulfill me? And why am I chasing this other thing where the, 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 the door's closing on it, but I really like it and I think I could excel. But why? Is it the ego? Do I just want to be? Mm. Do I want to? You talking about golf? Specifically? No, I've given golf I've pro. given up on that. I've realised it's not a healthy thing to chase anymore. I really have. I mean, I aspire. You know, to um, it. I wish. I mean, I'm jealous of a, go a golf pro. And, yeah, uh, so you should be. That's a nice life. That one, I feel like. Yeah, if, you <laughs> if you're top fifty in the world and you got enough money, otherwise, trust me, it's not as grass isn't always greener. Is the other cliche, isn't it? Mm. I like that. But, uh, yeah, that's but, very but golf why, related. But why golf was pump. I chasing it? Because I've had a void. I had a death of a career that I liked to do, and it was challenging. And I didn't had nothing. You know, I didn't yeah. have something that was challenging me. I didn't need to. Like I kind of realized digging in the dirt every day, like Ollie, to like reset wasn't quite what was working for me. So chasing some stupid fucking sport that you can't solve and you'll never figure out—that was what I thought I needed. <laughs> and part of mm. me still needs that. It's kind of like an addiction, mm. right? Um, but I think, yeah, to Ollie's point, the balance is key, right? And finding your balance. Fuck. Yeah. I'm no totally. superhero. I don't when have did, answers. When did you start thinking about like 
the retirement stuff and, and getting away from the sport like did, from an early age were you already thinking about you know let's say you're winning prize money I, I know it's not crazy for Dino but like you know you, you're making money let's say oh you heard that from Bernard you he's already... giving you the the, the alcohol yeah. of prize money <laughs> did you already yeah true did you already have any plans of like what you're going to do after you finish retiring or has it all come as a bit of a like fuck here I am like you're just living in it in the moment almost I, I think if you really still want to excel and, and you've got this motivation you you need to not spe- think too much of the future and it's kind of like a hypocritical thing to say I think once you start thinking about the future then you've sort of you, you, you're not entirely focused and I spoke to an old one foot out yeah exactly mm. once you're one foot out the door that's a super dangerous place to be on multiple levels and Kakaldi so it was something that interests me because I'm annoyingly a thinker right I overthink things so I would ask Kakaldi sort of 10 years into my career and he was retired and he came back and he was a New Zealand race that was known as there was a guy that was winning practice John Kakaldi is the name fucking every event okay. on the Norber circuit and he stayed on the Norber circuit and kind of cleaned up there he didn't always his, his sponsors kept him away from the World Cups a bit and, and I said to him how's it been what are you up to you know what are you doing for work and he said a valid thing he said try not focus on that too much if you're still in this game because once you start focusing mm. on that you're one foot out the door as Ollie said so then I you know okay. I refocused and um, yeah it, it just come, came to me later on and I'd done some commentary and stuff like that. So I was like, I could see myself doing that. I'd built some tracks a little bit and I was like, mm, maybe not quite for me. I don't know if I want to be a full-time trail builder. So I unfortunately had thought about it. And then I went, when the biggest mm-hmm. thing was figuring out like that I am not my results or like, why am I trying to derive fulfillment from all the results? You know, I had a good race. I felt good. I had a bad race. I felt like shit. So there's a lot of pressure. But then you yeah. stop being as competitive. And then I was like, fuck, <laughs> am I not wanting to be competitive? And uh, for me, the retirement was, I just wanted to be in a happy place and I needed balance. I needed the right team, right bike, right teammate. And that just never came around. And then Ollie's point, yeah. it's inevitable that it'll end. And, and that's the shortest version. I was just aware that it would end. Um, and I thought maybe mm. testing for teams and I had, had a few proposals. And we've spoken about it, Davey, probably on yeah. that first one we did before it was Ride Companion. Yeah, you know, there's the definitely. short and the long winded, winded answer. That's interesting. It's really interesting. I think I think, you know, credit to you. I think you've done an amazing job. The fact that you still, I mean, for me, it's like you know, you you had the the thought and the the confidence and whatever you call it to start a podcast is amazing. Like, good on you. You know, I think more athletes should be doing that personally. And the fact that you do the commentating and that you're still extremely relevant in the sport. Um, shows that you obviously still love it and that you've just done it the right way I think as well it's not it doesn't come across as anything other than just a massive like you said before like a fan and a and a what would you, what did we call it there's a word enthusiast. for it enthusiast enthusiast of Ollie. the sport yeah, can I put that in go. my bio yeah. instead of ambassador you're an enthusiast dude fucking we're fucking right we are it's so hard though that, <laughs> I mean I appreciate you saying it was because of your sort of push over the edge um, to start something but mm. I mean, I, I doubt it every day. I, I, I want people to know that. Dude. I doubt what I'm doing every day. I don't know. I have this. Definitely. What's it called? Imposter syndrome. You know? And I'm like, yeah, I have don't this. Don't we all? Yeah, dude, I think we do. Right? I think we dude, all deal don't, with that. Don't. You're authentic. If, I hate hearing what? it. You're, especially from someone who's, like, you're a career racer. Your, your brother's a, a lifelong bike rider. You ride dirt jumps. You race around the world. You don't even have to worry about it. Yeah, it's it being an imposter isn't something you even have to worry about. You've done all of it. Mm. It's completely pointless. You're as authentic as can be. It yeah, like, and, and I've, it's funny hearing yeah, it. I know it doesn't help. No, that's, <laughs> it's, no it that does help coming from someone like you. And, and it's like this sort of uh, self-understanding. And, and I think we all have it. I think high achievers have it. I think being a racer or being a sportsman... Or a business person, you know, type A, you're a high achiever, you're never satisfied, and that's why you get better. You guys mm. as well, like, Ollie, mm. you're not satisfied with that three, you know, if you didn't dump the nose down on your three, you're like, that shit, I can, I know I can do it better, you know, and and that's probably what it is. You're always so self critical as, as a professional sportsman, because how else do you get better if you don't criticize mm. what you're doing, you know? Yeah, and, and look at it constantly from the outside and like really zoom out like ollie said like zoom out and look at the whole thing of like where is all this going and yeah why are you doing all of it 
as well. Well, that's tough, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it sure. has to be about fun, ultimately. Yeah. 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 It has to be, because that's all the whole point. That, like For me, it's just yeah, about it the gets... journey of it as well. I think that's what I've come to realise as I've got older. Like, it's not about the money or anything like that. I just enjoy, and I think the most important thing is, like, you enjoy the journey of it. Like, the actual the fun is the journey it's not that okay at some point we're going to sell this thing like we're going to sell this network or whatever it's like enjoying that journey of it rather than just getting too caught up in where it's all actually going to lead that's i think really important because you can just get lost and years go by years and years go by thinking fuck i'm just going to get this i'm just going to get it to this point i'm just going to get this point and ultimately that point never really comes it just keeps getting further and further away or you keep pushing the goalposts further and further out yeah Oh, but Ollie, you'll so. be an interesting one because we spoke about it. So you're full time now, and you have been semi full time and working with brands. Like, how has that journey been? Because now I know what I've done as a professional, and then you know, like doing all this content. <laughs> have you been able to just you just lean back on like I want to do that style of writing, or you know, but because you've got sponsors that say, okay, go and do this video, and this is the script. And you're like, fuck me, that's not what I stand for. Do you push back or? What's the journey been like for you as a as a full fledged professional mountain biker? I think it, I, I've always just thought, "Fuck it, I'm authentic. I don't care." And I guess I've leaned on the fact that I dig loads of tracks and jumps, and like I can't help being actually. I've thought about it loads, dude. And also, like that whole kind of what you're saying about being an imposter. I don't have a World Cup career that I've done mm. to get get me to here i've all i've done really is like like try desperately hard to well just try r- riding good and like all of those years with the magazines and making cool stories and pictures all of that is like my the media side of it has been how i've become pro not racing mm. like i raced for years but it didn't ever get me anything and i competed for years and it didn't really get me it got me sponsored but it wasn't really like you know, so I just think as, as long as I stay an actual mountain biker. Yeah. I'm glad, you know, like a, Needles, I'm glad you brought that up because it's like something that I've walked this fine line with Ollie for a while. Like I remember, not to bore you to tears here, but like going all the way back to when Ollie and I first did our very first episode, like we we did this, you know, thing. And I, I came away from that thinking, it's fucking, there's something there like with that guy. Like there's some, there's, there's a little bit more to this. I think that it could, we could do something. And we kept in touch, didn't we? Back and forth, back and forth. But yeah. I do... And I constantly walk this line with Ollie of like, you are a very authentic mountain biker. You're very, you know, I'd say you're like a core. And a lot of the time, a lot of people who are similar to you kind of stay underground and they don't want to have the podcast. They don't want to be the forward facing guy. But ultimately, I walk this line all the time. Like, dude, do you fancy like doing this? And like, you're kind of like nervous to be like, yeah, I think that could be kind of fun because I don't want you to ever feel like you're like selling out or that you're doing something that you're uncomfortable with. I know we've probably had that conversation before, but it is interesting that Needles brought it up and like how you manage that and but then, you know wh- where you are comfortable, you know, with. Because I know sometimes you are a bit like fucking hell. I'm like, oh, let's do this event. Let's go here. Let's do this, and you're like, okay, hell. No. Yeah, but it's you know I deal with it as well. I'm like, why well, I get imposter syndrome like crazy? I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Here? I've not had a World Cup career. I've not ever done anything really in the sport other than start a business yeah but you're podcast, providing so. value and entertainment and getting by like you guys did your yearly ride i think i phoned brendan he was there was it bike park wales like, yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i saw you yeah yeah, yeah, that's yeah, cool. yeah like yeah. you guys have got this crazy fan base um that that is getting entertainment value knowledge out of you you guys it's called the companionship it's companionship. Dude. it's called the companionship it's a more like a it's not a cult. I don't want to say it's What's a cult. Uh, how much does it cost per month and what do I get? Dude, I've been, <laughs> yeah, we dude, I've been out, deep yeah, we diving some out. of these fucking scams, man. Oh, holy hell. You guys it, could what's sell, the worst one you've you seen? You guys could sell um, companionship. Your way to stay a core mountain biker. 12 easy steps delivered by Ollie Wilkins oh, yeah. and Davey. Yeah. And it's yeah, all right? NFTs? What, and you have to pay in crypto? I don't really care what oh, you yeah. pay with as long as these guys sign up. It'll be a monthly subscription. And it'll be £23. Hey, can pounds, you do that again? £23 pounds because it's Ollie, yeah, right? Dude, yeah. and then, can you do and that you again guys, and we won't interrupt yeah. you and then we can use it as an ad and for... And I'll endorse um, it. We'll actually make and the I'll ad. Endorse yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like, so can we start again? Okay. Hi, I'm Andrew Nyetling, uh, a professional mountain biker. Did 14 years on the circuit and then lost my way. I was not a core mountain biker anymore. And the only way to get back to my authentic self was to sign up for the companionship. 
delivered by Ollie Wilkins. Only £23 a month. Discount code in the link. 230 <laughs> <laughs> Sold. Oh, fuck. Thanks, dude. Uh, we'll, we'll, no we'll cut you in. Yeah. We'll cut Use you in. Use forward slash yeah. moving the needle for 20% off, and then I'll get the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, I like that advert because they don't even know what they get. It's just twelve steps, was it? It was just twelve steps to become a cool mountain biker. Yeah, it was exactly. There's no real sort of. <laughs> Dude, in what step one? The twelve step program. <laughs> step one. Wow. Wear a pair of vans. Right, can... I don't know. Do you know we've got forty five minutes in and we've not talked about the one thing that we're here <laughs> no, to talk about, not... and we've got this guy with all of this experience, knowledge. We've got an expert and enthusiast here with us. Thank you. We've they've <laughs> just read <laughs> and, and needles too. And needles too. Um, the UCI have just dropped their uh, big press release on next year, and actually, it's exciting because we've had quite a lot of radio silence, haven't we? Mm, and it's the lot. reason why we got you on. So it'd be great to go through some of the points, Davey. What what point we, would you like to start with? Okay, I think we'll start. Mm, let's start with. I think can we start with the one that I think is probably the most important, which is the introduction yeah. of the semi-finals. That's yes. the one that I think, to me, like stands out most importantly. And I'm hyped. For can it. I just add yeah. a little disclaimer here? I'm going to add a little Please. disclaimer. I'm going to also add a disclaimer. We need to... Go, you add your. Okay, one. do you want to add it? Because I was going to add it for you, but no, I think you'll be able to put it in you better add. words. Okay, now... here's my disclaimer. Let me. You tell me if I'm off or anything. The disclaimer is: we're not going to come at this from anything negative positive we're just purely sat on the fence we're just going to look at the facts and discuss what we think about it whether it's not positive or negative we're not taking sides on this is that fair to say andrew yeah i think that's fair to say and i think the news has only just dropped i haven't yeah. deep dived it and gone through the full rule book i'm going off highlights i've only just looked at it i had a weekend away yeah. from bikes that's normally how the weekend goes bikes in the week and golf uh what's the golf this weekend anyway maybe <laughs> <laughs> I love the semi-final. I'm okay, hyped. So you're hyped on, on the semi-final for what reasons? It's so exciting, right? There's and there's more to it. I've written down. I've got proper notes. Oh, I, I've gone through it. I've got proper thank notes. God I'm, I'm got, well excited thank about. Thank God it. we got the expert and the two enthusiasts. Then okay, lead us off, Odub. <laughs> you're the you're the. So it, can you not see how enthusiastic no, I, can I am? See the smile I'm clearly an enthusiast. You are enthusiastic. <laughs> So the the semis, I think, is really cool. I think it's a way of adding another. <laughs> yeah, well, David, yeah, the dick, yeah, yeah, semi log, yeah. yeah. Um, I think it, it it adds more than you'd think as well because of the points. So I looked at the points, and the points are nearly the same as winning the semis is nearly the same as winning the finals, right? Mm-hmm. So imagine how that will change. You, I'm trying to think of characters that it might suit. Troy Brosnan springs to mind, someone that can consistently put down really high finishes naturally over the course of a season in my head numbers wise you've got consistency being rewarded more would you agree with that yeah i think that's definitely fair and you've got to look at the points to build the story of of what the semi-final is going to mean yeah i mean it's 200 points versus 250 Mm -hmm. uh in the main event and there's a lot of guys that but now it's going to be more pressure though often you know qualifying that's where there was less pressure and guys would qualify well Right, so you only yeah. get fifty points for the qualifying, which is the old version. So now you go into the semis. That's going to be interesting. Uh, there is a way for you to earn a lot of points, but there's a lot more pressure because you need to get yourself into the final. But there's so many points on the line. So the dynamic and strategy, you're totally right. It could be quite an interesting sub like uh, plot. It's almost like two race runs. I mean, it, almost it certainly is. Well, it certainly yeah. has yeah. added added to that definitely. I think the bit that I'm still a little bit confused on is is how it's going to be broadcast. Like, is the semis going to be? Because it only says in the press yeah, release that, that. that the main event is live. So, are the semis going to be like a wrap up show or something? Like, is that what it, what it might be? I don't know. But that would be kind of cool, though, in a way. Maybe if the the whole broadcast starts off with like, here's what happened in the semi final. Here's this run, this run, this run, this run. Well, and build a bit of a the... picture about the race weekend. Because what yeah. I was nervous about, sorry, is if it was all broadcast. I'm going to draw a parallel here between national motocross racing and supercross. Supercross is super easy to watch. You can almost just like sit and digest it in a few hours. Whereas the nationals are like a day activity. You've got to sit there all day. You've got to watch Moto1, 
then there's a break, Moto 2, you know what I mean? Like, it's a whole day, and I feel like what downhill needs, personally, is it needs to be more attractive to viewers to who are just going to go, oh, actually, it's only two hours long, that show, I'm going to hit that, I'm going to watch it, because that will open it up to more people. But if it's sat there and it says, like, you know, broadcast six hours, I'm going to be like, I don't know about that. Does that make sense? I'm, I don't know if I'm off on yeah, that. But I'm, I mean, I just, I'm a little bit confused about what that but, package looks well, like yeah, for, the, but for the actual view. That hasn't been announced, so we can't. It is all no, hypothetical, no, right? No. But they're mentioning no. that they're going to broadcast it, cover it, but we don't really know what that looks like. Mm. We've got live finals runs, so that's ten women and, and top thirty, and men. that's new. So that's top ten women, top new, thirty right? men, and yeah. that is yeah. if you read between the lines. Are the tracks going to be shorter in time? Are they going to, over, as these season progress and venues progress, are they going to be forced to make these tracks shorter so that they can fully broadcast the whole run, which is a positive, right? But how long yeah. is a track going to be allowed to be so that they can fully broadcast uh, yeah. a run? Between the lines with Andrew Neithling. Huh? Decent. Not so bad. So that's Into a it. question mark. And that's, if I was to guess... That could be a thing that you see changing at some venues. Who that's just me has the power to normally change that? Obviously, before, could Red Bull come into a, a race weekend or whatever, a venue, and go, yeah, we kind of don't want to start from up there. We're going to start from here because it's more broadcast friendly. Has that happened before? Or is it literally the UCI sets the course and then the broadcast team just come in and broadcast what Yeah, they've... well, now, now UCI and ESO... From what I understand, I mean they're working a lot more closely together, right? They those mm. two together, it, I assume, uh, release these rules changes. So if you're the okay. event organizer, I guess you've got to work with the UCI for some of these rules, which they would have had to now. It didn't just happen from one side. That <laughs> that was attempted at Crankworks this year at Canadian okay. Open. They had a start gate down by Heckler's Rock. And the riders boycott it. They say, we're not racing a minute 40 track for, brought for just because you're um, going to have the cameras on it. That was quite interesting. <clears throat> right. I can't speak to this. Right. Um, no, no. I don't know how that's a problem. I don't know how that suggests it. I'll be honest, because we didn't no, get I'm not full suggesting runs anyway. It. I'm throwing a bit of goss out there. Mm. I'm saying the goal oh, is to... Brought, between the lines. No, the, the, <laughs> with Andrew Neithling. <laughs> it's um they're gonna fully broad isn't somewhere they quoted as fully broadcasting the runs yes but what does that i yeah, don't like know you said, what i didn't that, read that i didn't what does that um, yeah, mean? I, what does it mean like what does fully broadcast mean does but it, it mean? can't be because if they have to have the full race track difference in between each rider do you see what i mean if it, what about fort william what do you do do you just cut fort william from the i don't know yeah i mean like i say we can only that, that that's i'm not i between guess i'm lines. being silly and and giving some, some no I think it's a great thing, one to I look at I think because... that's something that you might see in the future but maybe I got ahead of myself there that's just like I say full disclaimer no idea I've got some sources I've been speaking to multiple sources from riders to teams to organizers to whatever um, but this is the first time that they've sort of put on black and white some of the changes or some of the information and I think they have an embargo yeah. on some of the other information because they've tried to release bits of information and it didn't land well or it got leaked right. or it just caused so much drama it's like okay well then they're not going to do it that way are they so that's almost like what the government do sometimes they like put a little bit out there see what the testaments like see what people react to it like and then oh yeah we'll bring that back but in so, we're not, we're so, not release that one. so ollie's super excited about the semi-final right so it's another yeah. time for the race and then i mean the biggest news is a 30-man final that's huge news. Mm. And then you look at they've mm. changed uh, the way they're protecting riders and who's protected. I have a question. Do you think that's good? I have a question. As you read it, and if we don't understand it, I'm not sure I understand it, but are the top 30 riders that have pace on that weekend, are we going to miss some of those guys in the finals? Because you have to qualify through the semifinal. And from how I read it, only five guys are protected fully into the final. So who else is protected into the thirty-man final? I have a, I, I have thoughts and feelings okay. on that because the current broadcast has sixty people qualifying. Agreed. Agreed. How often do we see someone from the un, from the not the, from the live show from the prior thirty riders? How often do we see them sitting on the hot seat 
for the duration of the top 30. You don't see it. It no. doesn't matter. And, and essentially, that's what we're... No, I'm not no, saying no, it can't no. happen. Yeah. It's very important that it can, but like... No, no, and I think, I, I don't... I think they've taken that dart into consideration and, it, and, it, and this rule change won't affect the overall in the top five. What I'm saying, or the top 10, what I'm saying is, what about a guy, and this is just a question, it's not an opinion to the UCI or the ESO. What about the guy, if I understand it, he qualifies 10th, he's not protected, so he's in the semifinal. He is going to be mm-hmm. one of the FOSS guys on this track, but he's not protected, and then he flats in the semifinal. In the semi. So he's not in the okay. final. So he doesn't have a go at the top 30. I agree with what Oli says. Let's all agree that most likely over a season, you know, the top 30 guys, that's where the race winner comes from or whatever. They've looked at the data. They don't make a decision like this out of nowhere. Yeah. I'm just mm. wondering. I'm trying to understand it more, and I have to have more conversations. I would have to have it with a UCI or ESO, and I'd love to. And maybe we'll have that in the future to get the thinking, right? Because there's, there's a lot of backstory to this. So the show, yes, you want to build this like amazing show of 30 riders, stories. But in other sports, often there's ways to protect that the fastest guys are always in the final within reason. Hmm. So that's what yeah. I'm trying to understand. And that, that's usually done on a point standing thing. It's like whoever's in the top 10 maybe are always going to be yeah. automatically into the final or into a main event or something. So what I guess what you're trying to say in a way is that it's adding another almost not a barrier of entry, but it's adding another hurdle you've got to get through to just get into the final. Yeah, like, and the, yeah, it seems anything like Anything could happen. That. I, yeah. But I don't know, like, the, sh- the pros are... You're kind of also adding double race runs to a rider's weekend, which I think... Yeah, that is, that's That's, true, that's pretty yeah. gnarly. Like, that is... And that's dangerous, these tracks, yeah. Are, yeah, these tracks aren't easy. You know, we see it in every race. Someone has a, you know, a, a biggie or whatever. So you're adding another element to that. And another opportunity for that to happen, and I think that's going to be interesting to see how the riders attack semi-finals. Like, do you go all out, or are you literally just trying to get into the into the final? That's that's tough. Like that is especially with times being so tight as well. Well, like it's not like it's going to be easy to make it into the final. Yeah, the qualifying <laughs> becomes a game to get into the semi, and then the semi, mm-hmm. like Oli said, that's exciting. You're like dishing out 200 points. That's like a race in itself. Maybe the guy that's yeah, could, like that could 35th, win a season. The guy that never gets yeah. on a broadcast is going to get some action, right? In, in the way. Yeah. Like, so, what's going to happen there? That's cool. There's a lot of pros, right? You know, if you go on Pink Bike, it's, it's just all negativity and it's all like, guys, if you don't yeah. have something nice to say, why even say it? Like, you don't even know the reason behind half the things. Or when I, if I see another comment about a bike that this guy's never going to buy <clears> or he's never ridden, but he thinks he knows exactly how it rides, I mean, that's bullshit. But that's just n- another <laughs> venting side point. And, like, this isn't the death of downhill, as some of the comments would no. say. No. Is that I what mean, they say? Fuck, yeah. Dude, it's, it's gnarly what they're saying. Mm. I get it. There is, I get it. The sort I of think people hate You want change. to resist change. Yeah, yeah exactly, everyone resists exactly. change because it wasn't quite broken, you could argue, is, is what they're arguing. It's not my opinion. Yeah. But, mm. but looking at this trying to grow the release, sport. I don't think it's like that. Yeah. yeah. And I think, actually, if you look at it objectively, it's like there's more opportunity for stories, for ups and downs, for people to have punctures and then recover. It's not just like, do, do, do you know well, what I mean? Like, co- points-wise, yeah. the you'd have to be so <coughs> consistent to get through a whole season of three runs that are important, that are points, race, points runs. You have to get through three runs every event. So now we've, we've almost changed the season. into It's an extra 33%. Let's say yeah, points yeah, wise, yeah. it's thirty three percent more work to be a, a World Cup downhill racer now. Mm. That's mm. exciting. Mm. You've got to put it together that much more. Um, it's going to be more of a consistency long. season for someone like that. That like one hit wonder race run that we don't do sometimes see from someone who's qualified pretty low, and they end up winning. That's not really going to be a thing anymore. Consistency is going to pay off, and the. the the, the world champion at the end of it is going to be a totally different character, I feel like. V- valid point. I think the cool conversation is how does this change strategy? How does this change training? Who's yeah. more in the mix? And you, you guys are totally spot on. It's the, I think a fitter rider is going to have a little bit more of an advantage. It's going to be a little bit gnarlier race weekend. It's going to be harder on the teams. Mm. Uh, you know, factory teams might have a little bit more of an advantage now, depending on the schedule. We haven't seen the schedule, right? That's probably going to come out in the new sure. year. Um um, and your consistent rider as well might have more advantage. Um, but what's I, I think mm. they've looked at the daughter and 
most of these wild card race winners or podium guys have been rain affected races right so they so are they removing that from the equation here yeah I see because the mean, guy yeah. that came down in 55th or he so he qualified in 55th right so yeah. he goes off fifth from first you know so he's right early mm. in this we don't even see him but he's sitting in the hot seat and then the rain comes down now yeah. i guess they're condensing the finals so there's less chance of a wild card winning a race is that would that be accurate i'd say that's accurate and we have yeah. had over the years we have seen certain riders tactically qualify knowing that the rain's going to come you know and try and i think that's right and it there's been a few i mean one guy yeah, stands out, I mean, which is greg and i don't know which race it was or how it played out but i do remember him qualifying quite they low got around in order to go by, out first they got around that by adding points to qualifying because that was yeah. from before points were with qualifying okay. yeah okay. so but now you could then it was like now you could sandbag qualifying to get into yeah. the same okay See, hang this on. is exciting so, qualif- <laughs> so sandbag qualifying because the semi-final day we don't know, imagine that if the semi-final day is a different day to the final then you go down so, early in semi-finals the and then you win semi-finals because of rain Whoa. yeah i've got a good question we go. yeah and and then yeah and then the race is cancelled because that's what they're saying in the press release is that if the race isn't held then qualifying at uh, semi-final is the race that's the they're the official standards yeah ah, is it i didn't yeah. see that bit yeah. interesting yeah wow there you go i mean i can't imagine what would cancel a race other than lifts wind windy lifts true yeah yeah yes. i mean lightning you can't true. run the lift there's no shuttles ah, yeah, to the yeah, top yeah, yeah. it's been this it's been minimal ch- times that that has happened mm. yeah mm. i think i've got a good question needles for you imagine yourself a young andrew neathling right you're coming up you're you go through qualifying and qualifying you qualify well obviously you're top 60 then you come into the semis and you come out really high up in the semis and you make the big show can you imagine or i guess the question would be do you feel that would be more of a uh would that get you more amped up and would a result kind of mean more because of the addition of this semi-finals and how would that affect the rest of your season if you're if you start doing well is it like almost like a turbo would you said when you were younger imagine you had some results early on in the season how that would affect your season now mm. no definitely there's always like momentum's definitely going to help um it's going to be quite a big sort of notch on your belt to get into a main final now right because there's only 30 guys that's that's not a lot i mean i just fear that we're going to see some big names not in the finals potentially due to a flat or due to something in the semi but your question wasn't to that it was a younger me racing yeah dude that it's going to be interesting I, i've got to speak to more riders about it so yeah you've got sort of two chances to s- sort of get into the final but it has to be top 30 so yeah i mean if you start doing that it's definitely going to build your confidence that you're a top 30 guy now you're a finals guy quick mm. right and yeah. that's gonna probably mm. lead to higher paychecks for the top 30 guys um but then again how long are they going to do the semi-final for is like are they just are we is the sport going to 30 people in the future just throwing the question out there don't have an opinion. Yeah. And okay. is this like so a, don't have an a slow transition to it? These are all questions mm. I want to know. Yeah. Yeah. And and what, what damage does this do potentially to smaller privateer teams and also privateer riders who aren't... There's literally no chance of them being on a live broadcast if they don't make the top 30. Well, wasn't, wasn't before, that you can the case before? Use that. Wasn't that the case before? I don't think that yeah. changes. You already only were getting broadcast if you qualified in the top... Uh, and I and I should be corrected here, but there were obviously protected slots, um, and then there were actual qualifying spots. But say you qualified twenty second for argument's sake, and because there's so many qualifying spots, and Aaron Gwynn had a flat, and he gets ahead of you, there are times mm. I think that you think you earned yourself into a broadcast spot, but you you just miss it. So right. that doesn't change that on the broadcast side. Maybe you get a little bit more action, and they keep the semi final, and you get a little bit of action in that broadcast or highlights video. 
But again, yeah, we're left yeah, with yeah. a lot of questions and, and not a lot of answers because it's just this rule change and that's all we can go yeah. off, right? We're fine, we're fine. Hey, let's let's give it a go. Go on, do you then, see let's what give I it did? a go, lad. Do you see what I did? Because it's... Do you know what I mean? Yeah, we've just got, read got the text. text. Just, okay, 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 sorry. Sorry, straight to the other. Hey, Davey, I've thoroughly enjoyed our winter challenge. I actually think that, like, we were quite lucky with the weather in that it has been mm. the most freezing cold thing in a long time. So yeah, I was very nice. happy to have my Adidas 510 Terex Gore-Tex shoes. Yes, I couldn't agree more with you, dude. It's been uh, it's been challenging out there doing biking, mm. as you'll see from some of the footage we're about to play. But yeah. I am glad that I actually had those because I think otherwise I'd have got two frozen blocks of ice as feet. Um, oh, dude, absolutely. But... Do, you know, do you know what? I know this. I'm, I'm always acutely aware that this is an advert, but they are really, really good. Like the, yeah. For me, the standout thing is the cuff around the top. It mm. just that works really well like i feel yeah. like that should be used on more shoes even and also i know what the question on your lips dude that you're about to ask me how did the ankle braces fit underneath it they fit fine that was what i was most worried about with these shoes wow so, yeah. that wasn't what was on my lips you know it was on my lips Go on. i saw some footage online uh of you actually just wearing them around casually so i think that's rad that they are yes they're an all-out biking shoe but you're yeah. down the, in the on the coffee shop sat outside on the bench yeah, coffee. You got you got your shoes on, so yeah, quite stylish as well. Actually, I'd say. Well, you know, they make me look more intrepid. That's for sure, which I really like. I really appreciate anything that makes me look intrepid, unless like I uh, don't look after myself. I really appreciate. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the challenge was to go for a winter bike ride. We both went out. We did a winter bike ride. We rode in the shoes. We rode in the jacket. Let's cut to some footage and see how that played out. All right, podcast family. Here I am, as promised, thanks Ollie for setting this challenge to go for a wet, cold, miserable ride. I think I'm achieving it at the moment, it's wet, cold and insatiably miserable. And that's a big word to say that my brain's numb. So here I am, I'm out. Thankfully my feet aren't cold because I got the Trailcross GTX shoes on and I got the pack light jacket on, which I'll be honest, I didn't want to wear today because it's bloody nice and I didn't want to ruin it. So I'm currently riding out up this big hill. I'm on the eve and I'm just going to go and put a little hour in. Here we go. To, uh, to see what these shoes are like. But so far, so good. Performing incredibly. Um, what more can I say other than thank you for this challenge? It's fantastic. I really appreciate it. Cheers. Let's keep biking. Hey, have you ever been on one of those rides where you're so cold that when you stop for a wee, you think, is it like, is it frowned upon to just wet myself or just wee straight into my hands to warm them up? I just considered it. For a moment, I, I looked at my dingling all shriveled up and thought I could just wee on my hands. I didn't. Or did I? All right, we're a few bars down on the old Ebe. Definitely pulling the wrong gear at the minute. Coat's performing fantastically. You couldn't ask for anything better. Shoes are phenomenal. Just done some paddling down there in the uh, bottom of the valley. Not getting the phone out as much as I want to. Just because my hands are so cold. Oh my God, sliding around. The trail at the moment is just a sheet of ice. And it is it's like raining, snowing, sleeting, so. I'm not sure if I could do a better test ride if I tried. We've got pretty much all weather conditions being thrown at us right now. But uh, we're still out here. I feel great. Viking's wonderful. I would hate to be doing this in bad kit. You know, a wise man once said, there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. All right. Not a million miles from home. Appreciate the challenge, Ollie. There was a bit of resistance at first to come out, but I'm super glad that I have. Um, I've had absolutely everything on this ride. I've been out for about two and a half hours. We've had snow, sleet, wind, rain, fog, ice, <coughs> coughs, everything. 
and uh, equipment's faultless really. I mean the coat feeding spectacular, uh, definitely not wet or cold at all. Feet are like fine, I'm wiggling my toes around and shoes are dealt with a lot today as you can see. There's a lot of wind, uh, rain and mud and spray and grit and snow been thrown at them so yeah super cool really uh, unbelievable to be honest so just gonna cruise down this hill home and get myself uh, nice and warm hooray for biking. biking and we're back that's very cool there you yes go. um david we want to give obviously we love the companionship and we want to hook them up so that mm. they can also experience warm dry feet during these difficult winter moments yes mate and a toasty torso as well Oh, absolutely, yeah. Our winter prepper pack includes Adidas 510 Gore-Tex Trail Cross shoes in your size. We're not just going to give away a pair of size 3. We're going to actually <laughs> ask you what size you want. So we've got, we got a pair of those. We've okay. also got a Gore-Tex jacket we're chucking in and some Ride Companion pre-ride roast coffee. Correct. And we'll throw a hat in there as well because you've got to keep your head warm when you're not out biking what yeah, right a giveaway right so if that, people yeah. want to win this unbelievable winter prepper pack by yeah. adidas 510 and gore-tex what do you what should we get them to do man i Let's feel just like get, we uh, need to continue the challenge yeah the i think so ride. i think just yeah if, if people can send in their own winter winter content what a picture or a video or can it be anything yeah. I think a picture or a video, anything really. Ideally, we want to see it posted on Instagram or Instagram is probably the best one. I think we go with Instagram because yeah. uh, then we can see them. You can tag at the Ride Companion. Yeah. Um, and if you want to tag Five Ten Official, you can. Yeah, let's just see your winter content. Let's just see you out there biking. We want want you to get out and do a ride that maybe you wouldn't normally do. And we're going to hook you up with a nice little winter prepper, prepper pack for your achievement. Hey, despite this contest being a bit wishy washy. Your feet won't be with the Adidas 510 Trail Cross Gore Tex and Gore Tex Winter Prepper Package. Nice. Mm, totally. I, th- I think I'm, I'm being positive because I'm thinking of it f- uh, from a, only solely a fan's perspective. Mm. So for me, it's just more, it's a more interesting story. Every round's more interesting. But I can see from a rider's perspective, which I can hear that you're talking from a little bit more, and that, uh, like, I can hear that angle. It's extra work, right? <laughs> it's yeah. fucking another horrible run that you've got to do. People don't, like, get to the bottom of their finals runs and necessarily be like, wow, that was such a great time, do they? Mm. No, dep- True. <laughs> depending on... You've got to do it twice. No, yeah, exactly. It's super interesting. But you're right. I've spoken to yeah. other sides of the coin, and, and I'm hearing it from you. From a fan, you, you're not like personally affected. You're, you're just saying, I think there's going to be more racing, so is there going to be more storyline? Does that build, build the sport up? I mean, my, my only goal is to portray the sport in the light that it deserves, as well as the riders, be it yeah. the podcast, be it commentary, yeah. you know, be it enthusiasts. Like, fuck yeah. Is this mm. going to grow the sport and be good for it? Or are there some knock-on effects and what could they be, you know? What are the negative knock-on effects? That was one thing I was thinking about last night, actually, when I was reading through some of the stuff and looking at it being on Discovery. Obviously, that's one of the major changes is that it's totally changing where it's going to be broadcast. And I do feel like, obviously, Red Bull have done a fantastic job. Like, they've, you know, they really have. But it has also, looking at this from the outside, looking in on mountain biking as if I wasn't a fan, I didn't know anything about it, has been in its own little echo chamber of only being on one platform, which only really ever attracts action sports and adventure sports fans. Whereas now you go on this platform, Discovery, and it, you know, you go on there, you look at the list of sports that they've got listed, it's like everything's on there, basically. Plus you've got all of the, I guess, other Discovery stuff that is on there. So it is hopefully going to, bring it more to the mainstream that's what i'm hoping that's from again from the outside looking in you know being able to say to your parents oh yeah you can watch it on discovery discovery plus is a lot easier than saying yeah you can watch it on red bull tv you have to go to a website okay then you ha- you know or yeah i guess some people did have the app but for me like it, it never worked anyway but um i think that's a positive but it does add a paywall which i think they haven't been totally clear on yet but there is now going to be a paywall which i think i've where, think why? it's six pound 99 where have you seen that i haven't seen that bit of the information i haven't seen that well it says in the press release that it's going to be broadcast on discovery plus right 
It does say, hang on, let me find it. It says, blah, 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 blah. hang on. Between the lines with Davey. Not so much. Yeah, uh, dude, you're doing investigative journalism. You impressed I could say that? It <laughs> <laughs> uh, got it. It does say somewhere. It says where it's broadcast. I can't, okay. So if it's a channel that requires a pay- paywall, is that yeah, what you're so saying? Yeah, so it says sub- UCI President David Lapar- Lapartient. Is that how you say it? I don't know. Also, thanks to our partnership with Warner Brothers Discovery, the spectacular downhill racing will benefit from greater exposure that will enchant existing fans and attract new audiences. Um, okay, it doesn't actually say it there. I've read the wrong bit. But, 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 it does say it somewhere. I'm just trying it. It's hard to read. And hey, maybe it talk. says it between the lines. Maybe it says it between the lines. With Davey Burke and Andrew Nathan. So, uh, are you trying to rename my podcast? I don't understand what you're doing there. I just like it. I just like it. It well, just has a ring to it. I want to make a jingle instantly. I want to make. Yeah. I think this Vitals podcast is called Between the Lines, is it not? Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Mate, we've done two other podcast adverts and, um, already. <laughs> every, um, and Clay Porter's movie was Between the Tape. Between the Tape. Between yeah, the tapes. that was good on that one. Um, okay, it is in here somewhere. I have seen that it says it is bro- it will be broadcast on Discovery Plus. And if you, you go, go on, if you go on the Discovery Plus website, it's six pound ninety nine to subscribe. You click on sports, and all the sports are there. What sports you get access to? Mountain biking's on there, cycling's on there, motocross is on there, everything's on there. But it is six pound ninety nine a month. It's a fact. Okay, so it's not it's not free, dude. That's one Starbucks coffee or some bullshit. Like at the at the same time, yeah. yes, because something's always been free, doesn't mean that is what it was worth. It's the same as trails here yeah. in South Africa. Like so many are being privatized, professional trail builders. Now, because I help manage and build, I know what it costs to maintain and build these trails, right? So if I hear someone else bitch about a day permit or whatever, the, I'm, it, I, I have no yeah. sympathy to that. So the same goes to this. If, if they're able to deliver a professional product that's better, um, that is that has got you know, awesome commentary, et cetera, et cetera, and a highlights package, and it costs that much, that's kind of just where we're at, you know? Yeah. I, I don't know what more to say that's what it costs for the channel, yeah. I just don't know what to say yeah, with it. Yeah. If your perceived value for six ninety nine is a lot more, then it's not a lot of money. Um, mm. And I don't yeah. follow Road to see what they do with Road, but they kind of own Road Cycling, right? And you can see the play here. Uh, if you If you watch some of the Discovery Plus release where they had Chris Ball on and they had the UCI guy and then it's Discovery Events is a whole company that specializes in events that puts on events mm. around the world so they're all together going to put on like they've got all this knowledge from what it seems and then they're going to use the best bits of that and then they're going to put on these events right so if that's where the future is and it's six ninety nine, and so it's 70 odd bucks a yeah. year it's not a lot of money to get good content you know I think what I personally want to see from this and the pay the pay per view package or whatever you call it is ultimately I want to see riders getting paid better. It's as simple as that. Like that's all. You know, yes, we want the sport to grow, but that's got to fuel these athletes being there and it being worth their while being there. We spoke about on the last episode a little bit with Tani about how literally it will cost you money to go racing downhill if you don't make the top, whatever it is five probably <laughs> you know and that's ultimately yeah okay let's say they are making 6.99 off all these subscribers and i don't know how many people that are, get to subscribe to discovery plus but ultimately it's a decent chunk of change that needs to be invested back into the actual product which is the riders so is that what would you some agree of, or am that, i off on is that? that what some of the worry is from the from the it's, it's my personal uh, worry a little bit like i was looking ollie and i we shared the i don't know if you've seen it needles the prize breakdown for next year and it's pretty much the same as 2022 which is all right whatever but i personally want to see that going in a in a more upwards trend let's say yeah i mean our sport with the growth of mountain biking and stuff like that like that's what i personally want to see i want to see riders actually being able to make a real living off doing arguably one of the most dangerous sports in the world yeah i mean our sport is always and now having to do it twice (laughs) to do it twice (laughs) Um, (laughs) no fair enough i mean if you can get good rights to footage and and discovery plus is going to promote you into countries and then you as a rider can get a knock-on effect of teams getting outside industry sponsors and stuff like that if that's a way for the money to trickle in i think that's a positive whether it happens or not i don't know it's all hypotheticals but the sport is as a history has been a salary-based 
uh, bonus based compensation based sports so i understand the question but it's quite tough because that's then just flipping at 180 now are you saying you want to go to a prize money based sport or you just want to see some of the money trickle into the sport um, and how do you do that and and mm. who gets what so mm. in in other sports i mean you've, you've been a racer you've been on the scene for a long time as well like racing do you think it's been is it now fairly compensated would you say like are people that are making the top 30 are they making enough money like is it is it fair i don't know yeah i mean what i mean if that's a relative a relative term for for fair but yeah. i guess like as a top few races from what i'm hearing like the salaries have gone up since i left the sport so that's good the top guys are mm. making very good money um mm. now if we start seeing Here's, here's what's interesting. What about if we start seeing with a channel that's doing road cycling, if they can start comparing the numbers and reach and, 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 and compare the industries, but the mountain bikers and the downhillers are selling more TV package time, but they're not getting paid what roadies are getting paid, like then there's a disconnect. So maybe that yeah. could open that door. I, I, I don't know. Probably it's the same with XC as well. The top of my I know head. we're looking at more from a downhill yeah, yeah. side, but probably the same from XC as well. Yeah, and, uh, and for sure. So... In other sports, mm. there's TV packages which get sold, and then there's a league. You know, in Premier League football, those leagues, depending on your ranking and F1, from what I hear, yes, there's a lot of money being made, and then depending who you are in the paddock, you get some money back. But that's a totally different sport. I, I don't know the e economy of mm. downhill to even comment on that. That would be flipping cool, though, in the future, couldn't it, right? That would be cool. Definitely. Hey, we've sold this TV package, yeah. we've sold advertising, and for that... If you're a top 30 trade team or you have riders, you get you get a little bit of help with expenses or whatever it is. Like, let's there's a pie, it's growing, let's share it a bit. That would be cool, but yeah. I, we might be dreaming asking that question. I don't know. Okay. So I, I think, like, looking at what's existing, like a road, road cycling, we can agree, is bigger and has a bigger audience, right? But does it have a bigger participation? I would say downhill is viewed by mountain bikers, road cycling is viewed by road cyclists and sports fans so it's like how can you get the sports fans mm. if you're trying to like grow a sport how do you i think it being on discovery is probably going to help that to be fair don't you because it is yeah, going to open it up like again point, the cycling guy is going to go to that cycling that the cycling fans going to go or whatever fan sports fans going to go to the discovery channel maybe there's a banner at the top downhill and it's this rad image of someone you know going through a rock garden You'd like to think they're going to click on it and go, like, actually, I'm going to have a look at this. And then, boom, like that's someone else getting introduced to the sport. But, again, that needs to trickle down. Yeah, like Rampage and stuff, right? So that's on NBC or whatever the channels are, right? Is that where some of the people are seeing the mainstreamness of that? There's people tuning into Rampage that aren't only yeah. mountain bikers. They'll be like, oh, is this the sport you do? And I'm like, no, no, no. Stay far away from that now. Um, I did a thing <laughs> called downhill. Oh, okay, what's downhill? That's like downhill skiing, but it's in the summer and it's oh, oh should i looked into that that is quite gnarly right so mm. when you look at what they do for road cycling and all that and and at least the press releases i mean they see how fast mountain biking is growing and, and they want to bring it all together yeah. so like i understand that thinking because they've bought ews right we that's part of yeah. some of the press releases that is now at the same venue and they, it looks like they're going to compact the racing and it's on one day and it, all the stages must be down. You know, I didn't read fully about that. Mm. So that's going to be interesting as well. But as far as like the trickle down of the of the value, I don't really know. I mean, I'm not I'm definitely not part of those no. discussions. I didn't read that bit. When you say the same venue, does that mean that you'll have downhill racers who can't race the, or whatever we call it now, EDR, because it's going to be at the same venue on the same day? Is that what you mean? Uh, I, I don't think they released the schedule of what a week could look like. Uh, okay. You would guess. Okay. You would guess. Because I kind of like that that's what's been happening is that you've got like downhill guys kind of like determining at the start of the season, okay, which one am I doing better at? And then they go down that route. Does it, do you know what I mean? I kind of like that that happens in a way. True. Personally. So now if it's early in the week, like, they're going to be wrecked for the downhill. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. It just, it does from an organization standpoint, it just kind of makes sense to have everything in one venue, right? And bring all of the industry together over one long weekend or, you know, Thursday to whatever it is. But it is going to prevent anyone from crossing over disciplines. Yeah, it's... You know, it's yeah. Trying to think of someone who does money that. as well. The like Martin Mays, for example. Like he, yeah. you know, often would jump in between, but 
you're not going to be able to, are you? Unless you're some sort of like mega fit guy. I don't know. Or you're doing some Mexican supplements. I don't know. I don't know. I was just curious because obviously it's always been different, totally different the schedules. Yeah, I mean... I feel like the crossover is less important. What with riders in crossing over? Yeah, yeah, it's because less I think and both less. both sports have come so far. There's yeah. only a select few. Right. You think you're either one or the other now? Well, like Eddie Masters yeah. is the, one of the few that comes to mind that's able to cross over and wants to cross over. Mm. But sometimes, mm. depending on his contract, one is has more priority. So there's yeah. unfortunately like for the... <laughs> I'm, I'm almost relating this going to war. You know how they sometimes, for the greater good of the country, we went to war and killed all these people. Uh, okay. For the greater <laughs> okay. good of downhill okay. and organization, <laughs> we're going to, you know, let some people's careers die. So there's yeah, going to be okay. some collateral damage when, when you make any sort of change, don't you? Yeah, um, yeah maybe. So, or maybe it's something that they just go and do the, and the electric version. Because it could be potentially a little mate, bit easier. Mate, I heard day. those are way harder. Mick Hanna said he's fucking yeah, mate, I'm sure they are. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Just riding above 15Ks all the de- all time. Yeah. But how interesting is the electric version? So this is the first time the UCI have... that Like, they've recognised assisted bikes as like a elite sport right yeah, yeah but how do you govern time. that i mean that is a shit show waiting to happen <laughs> how i don't want the yeah. job i don't want the job but i mean you kind of have to include no. it and then go how on earth do we govern it yeah there's something I mean, quite is... easy about analog bikes right you literally can go yeah it's all good it is what it is it's got pedals it's got a chain ring and then when you add that mirror in there it, it kind of makes you yeah you can do all sorts of shit with those things you could literally just change it off your phone couldn't you and be like oh it's yeah it's, it's restricted Beep. Dude, i'm not smart <laughs> enough to even know what what's possible and then how would they govern it how do they test the things afterwards? But I mean, these yeah. are all like pretty good problems to have, right? Oh, Discovery Plus, Warner Bros, getting into mountain biking. Like, whoa. That's like a proper yeah. a corporate organization. That it, totally. can't, it doesn't come yeah. without danger, but it's pretty exciting that we're even sitting here going, I'm thinking, fuck, sports seriously could be changing or the sport could be growing. I mean, it's pretty damn mm. exciting, you know? Because we've, yeah. you know, we yeah. had, it was like this, slow sort of melting pot right you know no broadcast sports in a shit show no salaries but you know the core demographics still loved it and then free casters started opening our eyes again and then and then you know it was just just like oh next thing red bull's got it oh what's red bull oh they got a media company okay and now you see what they brought us and how cool the sport is and then you go whoa discovery plus is wanting to have a go yeah what's that all about Mm. hmm totally okay. yeah it's a good way of putting it yeah it's a good timeline to, to think about really how far this thing's come yeah definitely yeah i'm interested Absolutely. in what you're googling ollie it looks fascinating <laughs> well i was trying to find because the thought of okay so already how it's been it costs so much to bring any of these sports to your to your resort because that's mm. it, all the resorts pay to if if, if it's in valdesol valdesol pay the uci a lot of money to to host a yep. World Cup round, World Champs, whatever. If they're now going to have to do as a package, it, mean, it it limits the number of resorts. EWS has been brilliant. Now EDR has been brilliant um, in that it's explored the world. Different venues have opened up because of it. And it's sort of the spirit of... I, I don't Adventure. Know. And, yeah. Advent- but mountain biking, you yeah, know, beyond totally. all of these silly little categories, like mountain biking is going to these amazing places, seeing these amazing places on bike. And like... It's what Enduro has done really well because, honestly, it's a race style. It's not really... It's, and, I, it is, and I think people, It's all just mountain biking, right? You know? They kind of, like, hunt out and want to ride. Oh, I rode an EWS stage. Like, it's yeah. become a thing, hasn't it, to go and take yeah. these things off. And if you're now limiting the uh, venue-wise, if they have to sign up for XE, EDR, and downhill, imagine how much that costs, cost and imagine which venues can do it. And I'll... And, could that be like a stifling factor? Could it be like we got seven rounds in the se- the world's seven biggest resorts? You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. It is, that's an interesting thing to think about. I was l- looking for the same thing just then, like well, yeah, yeah. how, I how much it is, it, but... how much it is to post and stuff like that. But yeah, I think it is in that PDF that I sent you, Ollie. But I can't, I can't find is it. it. Yeah, it's yeah. all in French. That's uh, all in that's French. an interesting point, isn't it, Ollie? What, what does that mean for venues? Does that mean you sort of get these staples on the calendar um 
which is incredible, right? Like, you know, when it's the right venue and it's iconic, like Fort William, Mount St. Anne, and then you start getting iconic E, what's it called? EDR. EDR. EDR now. now. Um, (laughs) Sounds like erectile dysfunction. In my head, I'm just saying, do you know what I mean? It's your opinion, not mine. It's it's my head, yeah. It's your head. It's your penis speaking for your head. (laughs) Oh, wait. We weren't meant to bring up the pre... Right. Over the the years, I've been to a load of cool venues, and I've met some really cool people that... that, um, that are running these kind of uh, spots. They they build the tracks. They have the guiding company. John Fernandez yes, in yeah, Freeride yeah, Madeira. Um, Anne from uh, Slovenia. Both of those guys, I've, when I first met them, they've said, look, our, my, our goal is to have an EWS here. This is what we're working towards. This is why we're talking to the government, getting funding, building this as a location. We know we need an EWS. And both of them have done it. And it's worked for both of them. Right. And, I, and, and, and when you say reason, work, really, you I'm... mean it brings in more tourism because people want to go and ride those tracks. Absolutely. They're, they're, right. they're two venues. Yeah. Like yeah. people talk about the Slovenian EWS as being one of the toughest ones. And, and people go out there and they test themselves on, on these long stages, blah, blah, blah. And then Madeira, for instance. Madeira was already, I mean, I can't say enough good things about Madeira. Amazing place. But like until it had the EWS and and then Trans Madeira as Transmedia is spawned off of the EWS, essentially, isn't it, really? So, yeah. It's, yeah. Like the, but, it's what builds a location, so it makes me wonder, next that's all. Year's, so next year's schedule, though, there's a downhill one, an EWS one, and an XE one. That was released with some t- t- to-be-confirmed venues, right? Mm. Okay, so, so they're all separate. Yeah, like some of the TBC France is in both the EWS and the DH... But the second TBC France is in DH and EWS and XE. Okay, cool. cool. So there's some overlap next year, but not all overlap. So maybe we're jumping ahead. Yeah. Maybe there will be some iconic yeah. venues that can do all three, hypothetically. Yeah. And from that, but they still realize, look, Derby, Tasmania, Medina, Tasmania for the EWS. So hopefully then, like, to That's your good. point, there's, like, still a lot of reason to go back to explore new places and standalone EWS or yeah. EDR as they'll call it because it's now got UCI points and stuff. That's actually a valid point and, and hopefully that's part of the plan because that makes sense. Like Derby and Tasmania, that kind of helps these areas, as you said, get on the map quicker and and, and become mm. popular. Like a Madeira, you know, we mm. went because, or I went because of a project, you went because of Brendan and then you realized, wow, it's amazing. Other people went because of Trans Madeira and other things, right? And how many yeah. people went because of you going? That's the thing as well. How many people went because of Death Grip or yeah, yeah. seeing some of your yeah. content Huge. and stuff? Probably, I went yeah. because of Jacob Gibbons. He knew about it. Jacob right. Gibbons posted one photo, and I was like, I, I have to go there. Yeah. And then, and then we organised that trip. Me, Brennan, yeah. And then the rest is history wow. out there. Yeah. No, you definitely need those enthusiastic, like core people, like enthusiasts. like John. You say enthusiast. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we're obviously still left with so many questions, which is part of the game. Yeah. And uh, But I think there's a lot of excitement. Um, mm. Yeah, the core riders that are yeah. in it, some are pissed off, some are not. Depends who you are and what you're I was going to say, have you for. had any uh, yeah. conversation with riders about how much were they consulted about any of this stuff? You know, obviously now there's this riders' union. Is that doing anything i feel like you should be part of that needles if you're not already i feel like you'd be an amazing spokesperson in that but that's just by the by but like have they yeah do you know if they've had any i, I mean like consultation I don't, I, or... i've spoke to some riders not going to re- reveal the sources but i'm not sure mm. if that was consulted or not um, okay interesting and i don't know yeah, i'd never heard of it before what the, the the introduction of the semis I, I hadn't heard of it even been mentioned so I mean the, the idea the idea has been floating know. around for a long time right there was there was talk of um, DH1 DH2 back in the day we had Lenz yeah, Ida yeah, one yeah. year and it was kicking off big time um, and I think right. everyone was very fearful of it be, of, of people trying to think it's F1 um, and mm. it's kind of not right it, it, it's silly it's the F1 of mountain bike it's the fastest you can go down a hill great it's as fast as you can go in a car around a racetrack, you could argue it's F1. But the sport's so different, right? And there's so many more variables. So to lock us into thinking we only want 20 riders on a downhill World Cup season or in a final or at a venue, mm. 
I, I don't know. So, but the, the, w what I'm questioning or fearful, and, and like I said, I, I wanted to be pretty on the fence, but one question I have or one thing I hope we can do moving forward, use it, don't use it, is build more chances for the best 30 at that venue on that weekend to be in the final. Whether you want it 30, 40, 50, I'm not the organizer. I don't have to deal with the stress. If your goal is 30 at the moment and 10 women, how do we guarantee that the fastest, best guys on that track have a shot at winning on that day? And I think the way you do that, or you could, is having sort of like LCQ and Supercross and Motocross. Is the yeah. semifinals awesome? Ollie's excited about it. We're enthusiastic about it because that's what, you know, we want to see more racing. But how do we build clauses and sort of protection so that you've got to fight your way into the final? But I mean, if you, qualif if you qualify fifth, on day one, just hypothetically, right? Mm. With number board 28. So you're like a solid top rider or 23. But now you're not protected into the semi, you're not protected the final. And you qualify fifth. Have you not shown that you deserve to be in the final? I don't know. It's just a question that comes to mind now after reading all the releases and stuff. I think as well, it's, yeah, like you say, it's, you don't want to over confuse it because that's what people love about Fair. downwards. It's quite linear. It's quite like top to bottom, long track, so many variables. But what I, I'm just, again, I'm just thinking out loud here, but what I like about what you just said, Needles, is like, the thing, I think the, the thing that sometimes restricts some of these things probably happening is that the length of the track is kind of like, yeah, we could do a semi, a quarter final, a LCQ, but the track's like five minutes, and then we've got to wait. X amount of time before we set someone else off. So maybe there's something there where it could be like the LCQs run from halfway up, <laughs> and then that's the yeah, LCQ. Now, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud. But it, it over confuses it. It becomes like no, fair enough, definitely. And but that's what makes Supercross viewable because you want to watch the LCQ because it's takeouts. We're not going to get that in downhill, I know. But it's that last ditch, balls to the wall. I want to make the main, and we do miss that a little bit because you don't get to see that underneath someone's helmet in a in a one run yeah format. so maybe they've created that with the semi-final and i think my sort of way yeah. to sort of defend my exact point is back in the day Donald didn't even have protected riders you had eight but you had 80 spots so if you wanted to make sure you're in the final yeah. and nurse your bike down you mm. could do that but we've got more competition mm. more top riders more speed um so it's it's super interesting i, I i'm just super excited without without you know knowing what's what's yeah. going to truly happen and it's going to pro yeah too, you would right. think it's going to take a year or two to iron itself out right yeah Maybe. it's not going to be instant is it no one is going to just chew it in and go oh my god this is the best thing ever it's going to take time it took time for red bull to build it into what it was same with freecaster for that to figure it out so but at least it's going to take at time. least the final broadcast i guess a, a defense to this and i don't want to get in the neck from a rider or whoever like i say i guess the defense is at least the full broadcast live broadcast is clear as day Whoever's in that final could win the race. You're going to see the run. Mm. You're not yeah. going to go, shit, do we have backup you... footage of the guy that's sitting in third place? He's about to be on the podium. Like, that's a nightmare, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Do you think the 10 female riders is enough? Does that do enough for the sport? Because obviously you look at it and go, it's a third? Like, it's, it's kind of a lot less. I don't know what it was before, though. I'm trying to think. Wasn't it 20? Uh, 20 or 20 or 15 um yeah i don't know i'm just thinking out loud again like and i'd love to hear well, from people more in the comments like, I, what do people think what do what the girl riders think females yeah, no, think? i'm sure you're gonna we're gonna get and i'm gonna do a deep dive and do an episode with with other guys and, and try reach out to sources to get you know more an, an overview mm. of what's going on i guess my only i just give it with a question can you guarantee that you get the 10 best women in the final then it then it, then it yeah. then it is enough because it's even less of a then, chance. Then maybe isn't it, it's them. enough, and I'm not saying there should only be ten and thirty to ten is fair and equality. No, I'm not. Don't quote me on anything. I just think if you feel you can get the best X numbers in the final fairly, then then it's it's enough, really, isn't it? Is mm. it not? Is it? I'm interested by your because it's an angle I don't come from. The protection. So so. Can you outline what it is about the protected rider thing that you like the most? Obviously, you want to get the, the fastest people in the final. Yes, agreed. But surely the fastest people are the people that make it through qualies and semis well, to the no, final. Well, no, definitely. But 
but as I read it, and that's why I say it's all new, and Davey's brought up, brought up some yeah, of it, yeah. and we deep dive. I like, I, you know, I haven't sit here deep dive for four hours. But as it stands now, it sounded like, say they go to race one, and then the top 10 from last year are protected into the semifinals. So if a Greg Menard or a Loic Bruni has a flat, he just has to get out the start, then he is going to start the semifinals. Then it sounded like top five from the previous year, or if by race two, it's current ranking. Like I say, it's not totally clear to me. Then they are into the final. So your Loic Bruni or your Amory, if they're high enough ranked, then they're in the final. But what about the guy that's sixth? Uh, that's not like mm. the first not protected rider, but he's almost equally as good. And he has a flat in the semifinal. And then he's not in the final and he's not in the broadcast. But some guys were protected. Now, wherever you draw the protection line, someone is missing out or, or like, and yeah. that's the F up. So I don't understand the thinking. I would have to have a, a beer with the guys that made these decisions and they looked at the, I'm hearing, they looked at the data and they weighed up the options. I'm like, awesome. Yeah. I want to hear about it. So my, because that's, my what I'm, that's the one thing I'm worried about is now, it can happen now, but the previous one was 20 odd that were protected. So you kind of knew your stars were in the final, whether they came yeah. down earlier yeah. or not. They were in the final. They had a chance to figure out their bike setup, sort their shit out. They were going to race the final. Are we, and that's what I'm trying to understand, are we opening ourselves up to a point where potentially some of these big names that could have performed have an issue in the semifinal, but they don't have enough protection to get to the final? Yeah. That, uh, it's just. I mean, there's 33% more chance of a puncture. I, I see what you're saying. And also, a protected rider, to me, um, uh, it, the reason for it is that you want to build these superstars. And it's that how you do it, isn't it? You have, like, five guys that go the fastest on, on finals day or whatever. Five guys, ten guys, whatever. But you like build consecutively up. as well. Like, the more, like, yeah, yeah. The, the, they're usually going to be there. But it depends what angle you look at it from. Because if you're a bit of a wild card and you're someone who's, like, danced around on the edge, on the edge of the top ten or whatever... You'd be like, why, why do they get protected? I'm doing a run that's within 0.2 of a second of their runs. Consistently, I'm doing it just outside. Mm. And I, don't, I receive no protect, protection. So I think it's just like a matter of like perspective, isn't it, really? I, I think with the protection thing, it should be either they either do it or they don't. Mm, that, yeah. Because I kind of like that it's like up to chance because that's part of what this is. Like with racing. Rolling the dice, it, aren't you? Yeah. Rolling the dice, not only just from the rider, but from the team, from the bike set up. To the manufacturers that are putting products on the bike i mean that's also a great marketing campaign you know for a tire brand to go like yeah we made every final yeah, yeah so i guess yeah. the protection must have come about with this broadcast thing right it must have come about with red bull mm. and stuff we should reach out must have I, I feel like we've had this chat must have come about so that they like ollie said it is cool to build the stories you kind of want to make sure freaking like brunies in the yeah, we need we need yeah, right? superstars like brunies we need on the start line so in f1 and it's silly that I said don't compare it to, but I'm just trying to figure this out because there are times I don't... Yeah, I guess they're always on the start grid to start the final. If they crash out in the final, they get no points, yeah. and that's a story. It would be a hectic story. Lloyd Bruni didn't make it through semifinals. He's not with us in the final. That's a story in itself. That's racing. So if you just <laughs> yeah. remove... That's, there's an advantage. Saying, move, remove all the protection. The, the sport's so the, crazy the is, because you've only got this one chance to get to the final and anything can happen. The problem is there's an advertising advantage in having the biggest names yeah. on the start line for finals. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So as yeah. long as there's an advertising... And, and if that is the only reason, that's pretty crazy, isn't it? Yeah. It's super cross is the same thing. Imagine tuning into a main event. Oh, yeah, Eli didn't make it. You're like, kind of yeah. cool, but also a bit of shit. <laughs> you know? I'm here to watch the, the, the best guys. So, yeah, it's a But that could weird happen one, in that. Supercross, but also, right? When you, could, there's no guarantee yeah. he gets through. If he somehow has yeah, no, they have protected riders for, for the main Supercross. events. Yeah, I think it's the top. T I think it was only two places though, oh. because sometimes two people out of the LCQ won't make it, but it'll be because uh, one of the points leaders has been put into a, to a main event. Shucks, there's no. Per there's, Don't quote me on the amount of people. But I'm sure it's one no or two. Perfect science, isn't it? Uh, no, no, there isn't. There science. isn't. I, I think there should be a reward for being like one of the fastest guys and being in the championship chase there's got to be some reward because like otherwise you're just hurtling through a rock garden faster than everyone else on the planet <laughs> week in week out for no reason like there has to be some perks 
other than monetary. Yeah. You know, there has to be some sort of comfort in, oh, thank fuck I won that last one. You know, like I don't yeah. have to. Yeah. But maybe there doesn't. I don't no, know. I mean, it's interesting. It, maybe that's in, racing. In, in some sports, like, I don't know if you, could you see a future where there's 30, 30 riders, hypothetical, and they have cards. So they've got their World Cup finals card. And then you have 10 wild cards. And then you have this other race series that you've got to race the whole year to get yourself into the top 30. So then like the top five, the, the, the worst five fall away. And then, and that's what was talked about in the past. Yeah. So hmm. they built two, the semifinal be just becomes like another race. Um, and then those few from there can wild card themselves into the final. But then at the end of the year, yeah. like the five to 10 worst ranked riders, Almost like a league. It's a league. System. They're back to they're, the they're lower like get, league. Go up to like the um, the tier one. Yeah. But if you did something like that, <clears throat> you need a few seasons to figure out how to do it. Then you've got to figure out an injury clause. You've got to figure out can you qualify? And you've got to figure in out the feeder. The feeder series, you? yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. We're just spitballing here. Mm. Is this the start of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this the start of the testing? Who knows? Yeah. Is that how World Champs works in a roundabout way? Is that it's like a feeder series? throughout each country and the top ones get to race that race uh no the shortest is that the country no. sends their their riders that they pick through criteria or lack of criteria or politics and right. then everyone okay. starts there used to be everyone was allowed in the final now they've started there's a few guys that that miss out um and then that's world okay. champs used to be insane didn't it some <laughs> of the riders it was so interesting because it had such a variance of skill yeah. Level, yeah, and we'll know? still is that yeah. unfair? No, and we'll still say. have that, won't we? Because world champs won't run under these rules. I guess it runs under unless I miss something. Yeah, true. Don't know what they're going to yeah, do. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. Where's world champs been broadcast? Uh, well, no discovery. Yeah, normally they'll broadcast it, but there's also UCI holds because I did that BBC or just on BBC. Yeah. So they often have their own rights, um, like Red Bull was geo restricted. So then they'll broadcast it in countries, other mm. countries. Anyway. Mm. Well, I think we've taken a fantastic deep dive into the uh, bench racing of current state of downhill. And I can't thank you enough because I feel like Ollie and I, we probably wouldn't have spoken about 90% of that. Is that, is that oh, fair, brilliant. Ollie? Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, it's always good to have needles on. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, absolutely. That was wicked. You don't know. I think, is there anything else you think we've missed that no, we should like, probably talk like about? Like I say, uh, I, th I think it's only the beginning. I think from January, I'm sure they release more stuff. And there's so many sides yeah. to the coin. Um, I just want the sport to sides, to sides to the coin. Yeah. Sides of the coin with Andrew Neefing. There you go. Can we can we get you on for more every press release? Sides of the coin, with Andrew. I like that. It's good. Yeah, I'm trying to move the needle. Moving <laughs> the needle with Andrew. There you go. There That's we a good go. one. You should there go. Wait, that I have That's that one really already. Huh? <laughs> when, when's your next episode out, Needles? Well, that's why... Let's hear a plug. That's why I was like, when's yours coming out? Because I'm about to record one after this and release it hopefully before this one. Oh, it's a race. So I've kept... It's a race. <laughs> so I've kept my actual opinion for my podcast. Yeah. Of course. You... People need to go tune in yours anyway. Is on... Good. Yours is on a Wednesday, isn't it? I'll release mine on a Tuesday. Yeah, we're Wednesday. No, dude, keep Good up man. with... Good man. Keep up what you guys are doing. It's effing awesome. Um, I think this fun. is the future though, dude. It's like... For me, looking at this whole thing from the again, looking at it, zooming out, jumping on each other's shows, yeah, helping each other out is just it's so cool. And honestly, dude, I was I'm very honoured that you do this again because it's so cool just to be able to message you and be like, "Yo, do you want to jump on our podcast tomorrow?" And you're like, "Yeah, what time are you recording?" Yeah, dude. <laughs> Boom! Like, there's no thought about it. There's no politics involved. We're just trying to do our best here, aren't we? And trying to have some yeah, fun. Yeah, man, it, so. exactly. And you got me out of a hangar meeting, so I was pumped. I text my brother. Oh, there <laughs> you go. <laughs> we need to get my brother on here because you think we're sitting on we the do. fence. My brother doesn't sit on the fence anymore. Dude, you should have heard some of the yeah. comments. I was like, mm, I won't be quoting that one, but you can come on. <laughs> have, you done, have you done an episode anything? with him? No, I need to, but have you done anything? he's just, he's, if I could get him authentic like he is in the bike shop and have Drunk. a mic there, it would work. If I get him here, he's going to shit yeah. himself, and I don't know if we're going to get the value out of him. Oh, dude, record it in the shop, like cameras. That nice. Is cool. And a lot of whiskey. Yeah. And a lot of whiskey. Hanger special. Yeah, he's great. So maybe once the racing starts, we'll get him in. Get him in. No, dude, he loves your guys' podcast. He, he was like, he literally texts back. He's like, if it's with Sean Palmer, you're excused. Otherwise, you better be here. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so good. Now, man, thank you. Obviously, if anyone doesn't already, please reach out, speak to uh, message needles, drop them a DM, whatever you want to do. Uh, that's not what I was, where I was going. God knows what Send happened there. Yeah. Send him pictures. Send him photos. <laughs> yeah. he, lo- he, lo- he loves baby photos in the DMs, like anything like that. Food, big food guy. <laughs> Check out Moving the Needle. How's that? And then we, we, can we get you on at the, the next press release? David, dude, I know the oh, answer to this question, but what is that box you have in front of you there? Mate, this is my my go-to every morning. This is AG1 by Athletic Greens. 75 different vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotic. How was that for an answer? It's pretty good, actually. <laughs> that was really good. That was really quite good. quite condensed. Yeah. So AG1 has become... I have it every single day before breakfast. Same. I used to... Mm. How about I tell you what I used to do? I used to have Please. endless boxes of little pills that I'd order online from different places. They were all different quantities. They were all different formats. Some of them were chalky. Some of them were oblong. Some of them were drinks. <laughs> some of them were this, yeah. some of them were that. I, I don't do that anymore. I, I, I've completely deleted that from my morning routine. And now yep. I make a delicious shake before breakfast in my AG1 Athletic Green Shaker. And nice. I tick very the box brand. for the day. Yep. It's a I'm comprehensive you, and convenient daily nutrition i do exactly the same thing always have it before breakfast empty stomach is when you should ideally take yeah. something like ag1 what i do sometimes in the week though mate i'll mix it up a little bit i'll make my favorite yeah. smoothie which is coconut water uh, a mango banana apple and some berries throw that all in the pr- in the blender a few ice cubes something like that boom mix that thing up mate oh set up for the day with ag1 That's, that with does sound nice that does sound nice. really do you know, really do you know what tasty I do? I use my shaker. I have my AG1 on the rocks, dude. Because I always think that sounds cool when people say it in films. I love it. Shaking that stirred. Yeah, that kind of thing. But I just put, (laughs) yeah, I put two ice cubes in and then they kind of feel like they shake it even better, you know? And it keeps it cool and it's really nice first thing in the morning before your coffee. Yeah, man. I, uh, yeah, love this stuff. It's become a, it's been a big part of my life. Knowing that you're nutritionally sorted before breakfast is a massive win to me, you know? I mean, you've ticked that box. Like you said before, you've ticked the box of nutrition. Like it's done. Move on. Do fun things in your day. You know that you're you're optimized and ready to hit the day running. Okay? I was about now, to say optimized. It's a good word. It I want to get our accurate. companionship optimized as well. That's the thing. So if a comprehensive a solution deal. is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com forward slash ride companion to get your deal. It's a, it's a good deal, dude. It's a good deal. Yeah, man. The, the deal really is in itself Athletic Greens AG1 formula. That is the best deal that you can get in life. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Athleticgreens.com forward slash ride companion. Links are in the show description, folks. Go take a look and hopefully you will become nutritionally sorted thanks to AG1. Thank you. Thank AG1. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I- AG1. Thanks. Thanks. What a great, great guest Needles is. He's a pro, isn't he? Yeah, literally. Yeah. <laughs> literally is a pro. And he's killing it, dude. He's big up, big up Needles. Big up. I mean, yeah, he said obviously some really lovely things, but it is rad that you can go and check out his podcast comes at it from a totally different Absolutely. angle than us a lot more professional on that side of things right like more you know does more you don't get as much boiler chat yeah absolutely yeah. boiler chat over on the yeah. uh, what was it what's it called moving more the research needle. moving the needle that's right or met one of the many other ones that you <laughs> should, should start. <laughs> let's get him on let's get him on the next one i'm, I'm up for that i think yeah. uh needles offers real good insight and Thanks. also he's just a good chat isn't he? he's a good hang yeah shout out to needles and shout, shout out needles. to to Jonty as well, because Jonty got mentioned there. He's Barton World Champ. Do you know that? I didn't know that. No, I didn't know that. Jonty's a really steezy trail trail boss, and yeah. he's actually he won that the World Champs, um, and I came second. So he's okay. first. I'm second at Barton World Champs, okay. which is uh, isn't it? Admittedly, it is an event that we started, but just you and him. That. It was just yeah. It was just yeah. Him and I yeah. Okay. Right. so um, yeah it's not really, but it's still a world champ rainbow stripes and rainbow stripes dude you I like it when it. people start events and then you you call it a world championship there what? used to be a like enduro <laughs> <laughs> doesn't yeah, exactly. mean it's not good huh? true true there used to be a when twin shock motocross first started 
there used to be a <laughs> twin shot world championship and it was literally just like a local race <laughs> 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 someone's like yeah I'm world champion like, it is funny you? isn't it um, what else is, funny on, man? is there anything we need to talk like is there anything we need to touch on I think uh, before before we do some listener questions Wait, is there anything well I don't know about you but it's thawed out now now oh, it's man. thawed out it was tropical this morning out walking how it, good is it I Mate, struggled it, it, I've been struggling dude the last few days I've, honestly I got really like narky yesterday because I was just sick just of being stuck, cold. aren't you? You're just stuck. Yeah. I went out biking rubbish, yeah. on Saturday, as we'll have just seen in the clip. Went out yeah. biking on the Saturday and did a big old e-bike ride, but fuck, dude, it was cold. Like, it was cold, cold, cold. Yeah. You know? And I got like a bit of a chill from it. I mean, the, the equipment was performing beautifully, obviously, but still cold out there, like on your face, your teeth. Yeah. Cold teeth's like my worst thing. I hate I that. don't know if anyone else gets this or if you get this uh, neck pain in the cold. I get, I get like back pain because I'm like I get really yeah like really stiff neck. For, I don't is that what it is? You're tense because yeah, you're cold. Tense because you're cold and like you're stopping yourself obviously from shivering yeah. and stuff. But yeah, I, I felt that all Saturday after I got back from biking, and then yesterday I was just marred it yesterday. It was funny actually. We went on a charity dog walk, and uh, <laughs> it was funny, man. It was like imagine loads of crazy greyhound women and blokes yeah. and non-binary people. <laughs> it, 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 it was uh like it was around this park right it was around this park oh, <laughs> but, what is, oh. yeah it yeah. was around this it was around this park but yeah. it was freezing and the whole park was just like an ice ice rink right and it had rained a little bit so it was just it was just like black ice everywhere and there's all these women with greyhounds and blow whatever people and uh there was some fucking big falls, dude. There was some falls. There was some big, like, you know, back slappers. There was one guy who was walking down this hill and he just hit a sheet of black ice. He had his hands in his fleece pocket and just went <laughs> up straight onto his back. You heard it, you know, the whole, like, Ugh! And I was like, oh, <laughs> fuck it up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Give it the old wince after. It was so funny, dude. We were just, like, everyone was, like, treading really lightly for, like, an hour walking around this park. It was brutal. Oh, I know what I wanted to tell you. I got to tell you, got, you about you- I gotta tell Let's you hear it. Yeah, I want to hear it. Yeah, I think it's one of these you have to be there moments. But I'm going to tell you about okay. the new gym. So, so I, okay. so I've been going to the gym quite often. Yeah, you're gym guy now, right? Not for the last week because of the snow and the ice, okay. right? Okay. So I've been going. You're gym morning. guy. I'm gym guy. I'm trying. Yeah, I'm yeah. trying. Five a.m. I try and go to the gym. And uh, yeah. obviously because of the snow and the ice, you don't want to get up and start de in a van and and then have to drive there and it's all yeah. slippery. It's just like I've just been no over it. So I haven't been for a whole week. And then last week, I went a little bit later in the day because I thought, right, let the let everything settle down a little bit. And I went at about half three, four o'clock. And so the gym for me is like a 15 minute drive away, which isn't far, but it's far enough that there's a little bit of friction there sometimes. I'm like, I can't be asked. And I hate that about myself. But again, weather how it has been. Anyway, so I've gone a little bit yeah. later. And uh it's really busy getting there, dude. It took about 40 minutes to get there. So already I was on the back foot. I'm already like, what the fuck am I doing? I'm going to go train on my own as well because the person that I joined the gym with don't really go. He just said he yeah. did. So I'm going on my own and I'm a bit like over it. So I've got to the gym and dude, it's like a, it's literally like a college in there. There's like 50 people, which is a lot in a, quite a small yeah, place, it's tough, right? Isn't it? Yeah, yeah busy and, gym's and, tough. Busy gym's hard. So you're looking around, I'm like, everything I kind of want to use is somewhat on it. I, I'm in my own head a little bit. I'm like, this is why, what am I doing? Anyway, so I've walked past this group of lads. They're all like 15, 16 or something. You know, they're doing five kilogram uh, deadlifts, whatever they're doing. And uh, they've literally seen me walk past them. I've gone to the Smith machine, started putting weights on, loads of weights. <laughs> and just like, right, you know, and I'm putting weights on. And this one lad comes over and he goes, um, are you using this? So like jokingly, I was like, I've just walked past you. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, made a joke out of it. I went a bit rude. I was like, yeah, I'm, I've just got here, dude. Like, yeah, I'm using it. He's like, oh, uh, all right, I'll wait for you. And, like, literally proceeded to stand and wait. And I'm like, this is not cool anymore. I'm over this place. Like, you can get fucked. So I was like, oh, dude, don't worry, it's yours. Anyway, I came home. So, it's a long story, but I heard, <laughs> I heard ages ago that there's a, there's a gym five minute walk away from my house, right? And it's, Wow. It's a proper spit and sawdust bodybuilder gym, right? Nice. It's anyway, it's it's meant to be not rough, but like it's you know, it's 
it's not a corporate like a pure gym or a virgin or you know whatever it's not yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. it's not a health club it's far from a health club so i'm like right i'll walk down there so i've walked down there and uh it's literally like an industrial unit yeah with a phone number above it so i rang the phone number guy answers in fact a woman answered oh you need to speak to my husband puts husband on called trev big trev big trev Tre- trev is like i'm not there at the minute mate uh, it's telling me all this information about it's 24 yeah. hours, you're going to get a key code, you can just help yourself, turn lights on, do whatever you want to do in there. But yeah. I'm not there, I'll be there Saturday morning. So I'm like, okay, I'll come and see you Saturday morning. Fast forward to Saturday so we can shorten this story up a little bit. I've gone to the gym to meet Big Trev. Big Trev, Big Trev, is, yeah. Big Trev is an old school bodybuilder. Big Trev is nice. a big dude. Yeah. He's been doing it, he's owned this gym for 50 odd years. It's yeah. literally an industrial estate. On industrial estates, an industrial unit, most of the equipment in there is homemade or been acquired. Nice. Let's put it that way. Nice. Like, it's yeah, yeah. Moody equipment. Nice. It's yeah. Ro- it's a proper, it's a proper boys club by the looks of things, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's basically, it's basically that's where I go now. It's basically like if Phoenix Knights had a gym. Nice. He, he knew everyone in there, dude. He said, "We've walked into this room. It's all like into little rooms. We walked into this room, and there's a bloke in there, Dom." <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I'm gonna. I'll tr- do. I swear. No, I'll not swear. He's, we've walked in there. He's gone. Oh, this is Dom. Dom looks alright a minute, but he used to be a right fat. Insert C words. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he knows everyone in there, right? And it's yeah, everyone's photos up on wall, bodybuilders. Oh, wicked! It sounds good. So that's sounds where I go good. now. That's where I've joined. So yeah, basically, it's 24 hours. You just basically put pin number in. You go in. There's an electrical box. You have to flick a switch. It's not corporate at all. It's like the absolute opposite. But I'm kind of nice. looking forward to it, man. I'm like. It's a, it's a bit of a community vibe, and the main thing is it's a five minute walk from my house. I can literally that's the walk dream. Five that's and the I didn't, dream. Isn't they it? don't do any advertising. Like literally, the, the only way I knew about it is because I walked past it once, and I'm like, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure that's a gym. So that's where I'm at now. I'm, I'm now a bodybuilder. <laughs> I like it, dude. That's yeah, well shit good. Story, Congrats. But I had to tell you. No, it's not. I actually, I, I, um, I, my last gym was exactly that. It had a tattoo studio attached. Oh, nice. It was exactly yeah. one of those like twenty four hour on industrial state, and I think it's just good. You just go there and lift weights up and down, don't you? <clears throat> exactly, that's it. That's all it is. You yeah, lift weights I, up and down. I just need to get I rid have. of friction. I'm trying to get rid of friction out of my life, dude. And the friction of having to drive somewhere is one of the mm. things that needs to go. For sure, life's got to be easier, mate. You know, it's just about right. Yeah. I just want to go, and sometimes you want to go at a weird time, and you go, like, "Oh, I just want to go to the gym, but I don't want to." To be honest, there. you're just remo- removing excuses, aren't you? That's the yeah. best thing you can do. You're just removing gym, yeah. resistance. You're making things easier for yourself so that there's less resistance. So, oh, I look forward to hearing more stories about your new gym. That's exciting. I'll take you some photos next time I'm in. When Please, I'm in. I've not been yet. So when I'm in. Please, I gotta go join. It's all cash. Dream, dude. Nice. All cash. Anyway. Oh, it sounds good, man. It sounds yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm in. Um, should we do some should we do questions? Some... Oh, we nearly said it exactly the same time. That would have been jinx. cute. I had a jinx, yeah. It would have been a weird episode. Let's do it. I've got them up here. Okay. Shoot. You do one. I'll do one. Um, what was the most... This is from uh, Omnimagon. What was the most I'm an influencer thing you did this year, good and bad? Davey, over to you. I think, oh, dude, I would not class myself as influencer at all. Not one little bit. I do not class myself as that. I think the one thing that springs to mind, though, where I've just pulled the card a tiny bit, would be after we did Podium Picks and I realised that you'd picked all KP Snacks. I reached out to KP Snacks and we got you a gift box sent out, which you didn't even realise was a gift box. I didn't box. know where it came from, but I sure ate, ate so them. So you just ate them. You never mentioned it. It was just it. all those never Tyrrell's crisps. <laughs> no, I, I'm really sorry. I've ruined a bit. It was just a load of crisps, and I actually just thought George had ordered them for me. Did you even say so thank you to George? <laughs> did she not? I didn't. I just thought... <laughs> it was, she went away on crap. holiday. <laughs> She went away on holiday, so I just ate all the crisps. It was like four packs of crisps. Oh, is that so all I right? just, I thought it was like, yeah. yeah. I reached out but to thanks, him. thanks, KP like, Snacks. KP, like to KP, we do this thing, Podium Picks. Ollie, my co-host, picked all your brand stuff. Can we get him a little gift sent out and we'll like talk about it? And yeah. It, just it was funny bombed, because it was it all Tyrrell's so crisps. It was all Tyrrell's crisps. Crisps. So yeah. it wasn't even like KP Nuts or anything like that. No, so that's I, what there it was, was no. Be. And I had to look through all of the. the um, I had to look through the packaging to actually find that it was KP, so... That's so funny. After you told me, yeah, it's fucking funny, yeah. Yeah, that's the one that jumps out that's recent. Nice, nice. Um, the most I'm an influencer thing I did this year, good and bad. 
I really struggle to really even know what. I mean, just having Instagram is quite influencery, I guess. I it's not something I'd naturally have. I don't naturally want to like share things necessarily, but no. it's quite like I don't know. I don't really. I think, and then also I go on YouTube and I say stuff like, "Can you subscribe?" So, yeah, you did get a hotel really cheap in Whistler. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That that for sure is. <laughs> that for sure is. I I went from um, three grand a night hotel to uh, the Pangea Pod, and, and see, and their advert continues. <laughs> and I got that for next to nothing. I got it there for like eighty go. quid or something. So yeah, I did it. I didn't influence a deal there. But I don't right, really no, just having the win. platform. Is, yeah, uh, in it. Obviously, you. We've probably asked. I've asked you this before. You've got yeah. obviously quite a big platform. Has that always been steadily growing, or there was was there one project or one thing that came out and it like blew? No, I'm lucky. It's steadily grown. It's always it's just not, been ticking up. All the yeah, time. it's. So I feel like yeah, it's yeah. I've got a really um, nice one. I think mm. for that because I think mm. if you get like a super steep growth thing, then I think people f- fuck off. Yeah, you know, I, cool. I, th- I don't think it's as real. Yeah, that's cool, really cool. Good on you. And before Instagram, already I'd just been doing being in magazines and stuff like that. So it's like yeah. a real like slow cooker. It's like the opposite of mate. To slow cooker that to that large figure is really impressive. Mm, thanks, David. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Likewise, your large figure. <laughs> 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 Uh, all right, what else? Oh, you got? Right, uh, loud, right. loud and low. Porsche or Ferrari? It's going to be a Porsche for me. It's going to be a Ferrari for me. There you go. I just want to sound make like what a you one day. I want to say Rari. Yeah, yeah, yeah say Rari would be nice. Yeah, yeah. should we take the Rari? Take the Rari. Um, like it, dude. <clears throat> after you. Not the real Rob Warner says uh, I've got nothing. I'm hungover. But thanks for sharing. I like thanks. that. I like thanks, that. Yeah, Christmas. Thanks, Rob. Oh, okay. This is a um. <laughs> Bike chat engaged. Don't do it. From Curti seventy seven. Suspension talk. Which is the best placement for rear shock, horizontal or vertical, and why? I tell you what. Shall I? Could, would you like me to answer that, or Please. do you have an opinion? Okay. I okay, have okay. literally no opinion on this at all. The fact that well, there's a rear shock on there. Thank you. Think yourself very lucky. And move on. <laughs> <laughs> so ultimately, it doesn't matter because they've worked it out. You don't have to worry. All you have to worry about is what you like the look of. Because every bike company is going to have a different aesthetic, yeah. and ultimately that's what it comes down to. So whether you like aesthetic, I, do you know what I think there is? There's like an aesthetic weight that a bike holds, and I do quite like when that a bike holds weight down low. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Do you know what you. I mean? I feel you, yeah, I feel you. I definitely like that as well myself. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. But with that said, like the jam, for instance, has moved to a top tube to a horizontal shock, yeah. and it still looks like the weight is down low because it's got like the bend in the down tube mm. I don't know but th- there you go yeah so so there you go there I guess go. That, that there is um something in a shock holding oil so the oil so the seal is always lubricated so that's why an upside down ah. fork is meant so to be the reservoir is above it and it's always exactly yeah so it's ah. low friction but okay alright but then a vertical that. shock won't be pure horizontal will it no, no it's always going to be a little bit it's of always a... going to be down so yeah who knows Mate, Great answer. It's 30, 77. We hope you find yourself a perfect answer somewhere. Absolutely. Um, at Tim from Wales, are you going to drop the long sleeve or splatter tees again? Okay. So, we got some merch dropping. It should be here today. It might be out by the time Ooh. this podcast comes out. It's sick, but let's not. I don't know even whether to talk about it or not. I think the best thing is if you're hmm. on our, if you are on our mailing list. Yeah. You're gonna know about if the merch comes in time if we can get it to you before Christmas if it's humanly possible I'm going to try and make it happen wicked and it's this is probably the coolest merch drop we've done in my opinion so we're going to drop there's going to be one drop now and then there's going to be one in the new year as well and then at the end of it there's a prize should we say that's right right? yeah there's a prize at the end we're teasing we're teasing Teasing. we're We're really slowly teasing just a little bit of areolas coming out now Mm. you're starting to learn a bit more about it you didn't really laugh when i thought you were when i mentioned but uh, yeah whatever we're teasing i don't know what an areola is do you not all right then no worries let's move on all right go on then um okay we've got uh what are the Good question. Francis D, where is your temperature limit when riding in winter? Davey. 
Depends. Um, temperature limit. Like, how low will you go? I don't mind, to be honest. In all, you know, you joke about it being cold and this, but there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. If you've got the right equipment, get out there, get involved. You always warm up. I think biking is one of those things that you just warm up. Uh, and there's something nice about a really dry minus three, four, whatever it is. It's yeah. when it's. I feel like the, the, the if you were to put a limit on it for me, it'd be quite, quite high because it's usually a little bit higher, but you're like. It's raining and it's windy, whereas if it's just a nice cold, I don't really mind. I don't really have one. I don't have a limit. There's no limit on biking. I'm with you with preparation. I am, I'm completely with you. Do you know what I think is just your outer extremities are the things that you need to take mm. care of? Because they're the things that really get you down, dude, don't yeah, they? Yeah. Like, if your fingers freeze up, you feel like, this isn't fun, I can't break, I can't enjoy it. If Definitely. my toes freeze up, it's exactly the same. So I would say the best thing you can do is just... Prepare for that, even if that involves, whether that involves getting some Dex shell socks, like yeah. some waterproof socks, or like yeah. or like the Gore-Tex uh, shoes, shoes really helped, or yeah. like a, a winter glove, or to be honest, just spare gloves, bring spare gloves. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, and always I got use... wet hands on Saturday when I went out. Yeah, it's rubbish. Really it's so lucky. rubbish, yeah. I was riding, I was a bit on my way home, and I seen my mate in his truck, and he pulled over, and I was like, can I just warm my hands on your exhaust? Not touching it, but you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it was a godsend, dude. Honestly, it was so absolutely. Nice. Well, those like mechanics gloves as well, like rubber latex gloves. If you just have a set of those, put them on underneath your gloves, then I really, I really get cold hands if I have that. Yes. You get gross, like raisin hands. Yeah, from, like like you've been in the bath too long. I but I would take that over having cold hands. Cold hands is like a ride ender for me. It's boring. I can't mm-hmm. break, so I can't ride. True, it's a good one. It's a great one. Great answer. Uh, Olivia, the engineer, will there be an O Dub Christmas ride? edit there will there will it's coming i just need to okay so i'm um yeah it'll it'll be out before christmas but i i'm in between moving house at the moment so you can probably see from behind me it's very bare um and uh yeah i'm all over the place i just need to sit down and edit it It's, it's pulled onto the timeline it just takes a long time these things do take a long time if you want them to be like funny as well and not just endless raw footage they do take a little while and uh (laughs) Yeah. No, well, I, I do the same, but yeah, there will be. Thanks for asking. I'll do my best. Okay. Two to one racing. What's the one thing bike related and non bike related you'd want to open at Christmas? Do you do Christmas gifts? Yeah, I think I'm limiting. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've got no money this year, so I think I'm limiting to just food, food gifts only nice, to everyone. One. Yeah, because it does just put a natural limit on it, like, I, I, you know. I I did a really sort of nice thing, I think. So I, even though I'm now like 36, my aunties always still get you like a Christmas present. They're like, you know, even if it's a bottle of beer or whatever. And I sent them a text about two weeks ago, like, look, basically cost of living crisis. I'm 36 years old. You don't need to do this anymore. Please use that money on yourself or use it for a grandchild. Because I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I don't want it. Anyway, yeah. but we don't do Christmas presents, to be honest. But I would like to open a sauna. That would be really nice. Like, if there was one present, I'd love to open um, a sauna. Sauna like, door. Preheated. Yes. <laughs> sauna door. <laughs> sauna yeah. door. I, mean, I meant unwrap it or, or just walk into it, yeah. Whatever. Big one to um, unwrap, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it would actually. And bite-related. I don't really want for any bite-related stuff at the moment. Um, I don't have a bite-related one. I could do with some new bike cleaner. So I go for that. That's a good, that's a solid present, to be honest. If you're, if you're, yeah, you know, it is a solid present to someone who's riding. Like, I, I like, I really appreciate presents like that, like toothpaste. You know, like, yeah. just, it that stops want... me going out of the house to get something annoying. Yeah, toothpaste is a good one. So is mm. that yours? If you, is there anything bike related that you toothpaste. like? <laughs> uh, bike related, I'm very, very lucky. I think I'd like to get maybe some more well actually maybe not now it's thawed out I was going to say some of the, some more TLD swelter gloves Ooh. because they're like the winter ones and I, as soon as I get one pair wet I don't ever get round to yep so there's them maybe that um, <laughs> I don't know I'm very, very I feel very lucky uh, look at me just looking at a bike just yeah, trying to work out what I, what I want I've got a, I've got a load of tyres I've got a load of good goodies Still mm. in the sh- shed. Oh, I know, I know. I'd like one of those racks that... Um, do you know the racks I mean? Yeah, I might slide along. Oh, yeah. Should I do... Like can we do hook. a shout-out, or is that too, like... Yeah, let's do a shout-out, man. 
Is this the is this the response to the first question? What a bike related one? No, is it the influencer thing? <laughs> 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 Alright, I'm not doing a shout out, but yeah, right, some sort of bike circle. storage thing, yeah, exactly, yeah. Something so that I can um, rack out <laughs> wherever I end up keeping my bikes. Do right, it. I'll just, dude, I'll just message him. That's what, you know? Just message him. We just Next time I need a poo, <laughs> <laughs> I've revealed. That's when I do my influencing. <laughs> <laughs> right, next one. Too good. Two more, one each. All right, done. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it is farting just like yawning. Once it, <laughs> once one person starts, it's infectious. Can I answer that? <laughs> I don't agree. It is like yawning because yawning you can't help it, but farting. I think you it's can... a visual thing as well with yawning. You see yeah. the mouth open, you don't see the bum all open and the come out. No, nothing. I didn't. I didn't make you yawn. I thought I was going to. Ah, um, whereas farting is infectious, but in a different way. Like once, once one fart has happened, and it's clear that everyone finds it funny. It's quite mm. hard to not do a fart. I'm not much of a farter. I'll be honest. No, same. I'm really like. Um, Must be all old that. School like that. I try not to fart. AG1. women. Must be all the AG one. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, my guts, I keep it in check. I'm not like that. I've never farted around like Emma or any other no. people in public or anything like that. I'm not that guy. Some people don't give a fuck, do they? They no. just like. Yeah, I do agree. Farts are funny. Like yeah, they are they funny. Have the time. But, they have a the time. They have a time and a place. I think I prefer yeah other other types of funny. Yeah, I think. Mm. Yeah, farts can be one of the most funny things though. Also, they can be in the right time, and if they don't like <laughs> make you want to be sick, it's really important. <laughs> So farts, for instance... I'm glad we're ending this on... Yeah, farts. on farts, it's good. I, I think farts are extra funny when someone's not enjoying them, and they can, <laughs> that can push me over the edge. So if it's like a public fart, and then someone acknowledges it that you don't know, and they're upset by it, that is really funny, and that's bad, because the joke's on them. Yeah. Okay. But it's also very funny, isn't it? Can be. Can be funny. Yeah, in the, yeah in the right. I don't know, I don't, do I find farts funny? Sometimes... I think I prefer fart noises that someone makes out of the mouth a little bit okay. funnier than the actual... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gas Do you find falling over anus. funny? Do you find falling over funny? I like oh, some man. of the lowest forms of... Like I went to best. Ikea the other day, and yeah. uh, I do... One of my gags... One of my uh, gags is to fall over publicly uh, when I'm around my family. And just do, you know, the most aggressive fall over. You drag you things down careful, on man. you. You're getting old. No, it's fine. I've still got it in me. I've still got a good really? fall in me. I'm good at falling. It's one thing I'm good at, yeah. And you drag things down here, yeah? Yeah, you know, we were in the car park. I was pushing the trolley, and then I there was a uh, in Ikea, which is already like a, an experience in, on its own. So I fell over, dragged this like, there was a, a child's chair, dragged that <laughs> so on top of me. People come over to, because <laughs> people come over to help. And then it's really important that my brother doesn't laugh then. And then that's what makes it funny. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's the funny. The funny is he can't laugh. I'm already in the. I'm, I'm in my role. I'm you're not going to laugh. Playing the character. I'm the guy that's fallen over. Whoa. Oh. You know? <laughs> oh. Like that. And then it's on him that he can't laugh. And that is the, the funny. That's the gag. I like it, dude. Dude, I'm practical yeah. joke guy. Like, that, that's in my sort of humour. I've mm. literally, before recording the podcast there, I was watching some Charmy videos. I don't know if you watch Charmy, the Aust- Australian guys, like pranksters. No. Yeah, it's funny, dude. I, yeah, I like that shit. That's my kind of humour. That's Pranks, silly. Yeah. Grew so up with the jackass, trigger happy TV. Yeah, so the joke's on someone, right? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. about that, because I think about how it's like... I, I thought. Well, I only thought about it yesterday, because I did the falling over, and the guy came to help. And I, I don't feel bad that he's come to help, because as long as, as, long as he doesn't <laughs> n- then find out it's a joke... All he's done is helped someone up that's fallen over. Yeah. There's no, uh, like... Yeah. You know what I mean? I There's nothing, like, mean about that. Over. Yeah, it's I like that as well. I like, I also, like the actions of people. Yeah, I like going for walks in the woods when I'm with Georgie. She's sensible and I'm not very sensible. So when we walk past other people, I'll do hello, but I'll just do it in a voice that she finds funny and they won't be able to react because as far as they know, I talk like that. So I'll do... Go for on. instance, I'll do, like, hello, like that. <laughs> And then it's on her to not laugh. Because I can do that all day. Hello! <laughs> These are small. I yeah, really they, enjoy those what, ones. These are what keeps life ticking, man. These are what makes yeah, best. so serious. Yeah, best. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Yeah, you know what yeah. I've adopted since riding with you was the um I can't even do it though, but the honk honk like <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's good, uh, isn't it? Yeah. No, it's a really good one. I'll often do yeah, that if I'm behind yeah. people who are walking and it always makes me laugh inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it's I, good. I, I like but I, I like the fact that they're looking on like where the fuck's the horn? Yeah, where's you know the horn? I mean? Absolutely. <laughs> where's the clown? It's good, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it is literally, oh, isn't it? Lad. Okay. Last one. Don Wolcott. And this is we're going to send it off for this one, dude. Because send Christmas it off with is here. This is the last Dom episode saying, before Dom Christmas. Saying. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Best Christmas roast lineup: meat or veg, then accompaniments. Okay, so, then. My Christmas dinners have changed a lot recently. Obviously, my girlfriend being vegan, Christmas looks a little bit different in our house these days, which is fine. A little bit grayer. Like, little, little bit grayer. Gray. <laughs> gray. I don't. I'm not turkey guy anyway. I don't like turkey. Right. It's, that's no. why you only have it once a year because it's fucking horrible. Like it's not. Is it? Great. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's my personal thing. But yeah, I just I'm just quite a traditional uh, Christmas guy. Again, it's not really new for us. We have roast vegetables pretty much every day, so it's literally like the same thing, but just in someone else's house or someone else has made it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, I'd always just. Get, I mean, best. What's the even question? What is the question? Best Christmas roast lineup. What's your favourite thing about Christmas dinner? In t- for you, in what? What's your favourite thing? Wine. Wine, uh, lovely wine. Ugh. No, best thing. I'll, you know, the best thing about Christmas dinner is the last few forkfuls where you've got a bit of everything you've got some mash on there you've got some peas some carrots yeah. all the gravy juice obviously you know being northern we live for the Go gravy so it's grave. like, yeah the graves, so that's yeah. the, the my favorite bit is the the end where you're like mopping up everything that's my favorite there you go bit. mopping up nice like it. it's good it, yeah what about you um i every year will just eat chocolate and then not really eat Okay, I, the amount of chocolate. <laughs> the problem is the amount that I can consume without feeling any feelings of guilt, especially in, on Christmas. Normal yeah. everyday life, I can I can clear away a lot of stuff. I know I don't look particularly like I could, but I am, yeah, really You're proper. Guy. Sweet too. Yeah, proper like bin mouth. Yeah, and what happens every year for Christmas because people give you chocolate? I'll just eat. The amount of chocolate is unbelievable that I can wow. put away. And you then when it like comes to and sitting down... Him, and then you just don't eat it because it's just painful. Nah, nah. And then when it comes to sitting down, I don't really care. But mum always does these like little tiny um, pancake things with uh, cream on and then smoked salmon. I really like them. It's not Christmassy at all, but it's like an hors d'oeuvre. I really like food that has no quantity limit. And that is for real. I don't know if any of our listeners have this as well, but celebrations... Mm. I don't care which flavour. All I want is the one that no one else wants. Because then I don't have this, oh, I can only have two. You like know? Pringles. Galaxy Caramel. Oh, I can only have two because they, other other people might want them. No. Ba- give me a bounty. Don't just give me a bounty. Give me 20 bounties and I'll eat Bounties all aren't in anymore. Them. Took them out. No. Yeah. News Did flash. the UCI do that? Did the UCI... I so. Yeah. The UCI to took all the bounties. Oh, yeah. They're trying to set the... Oh, did you Make see a celebrations more, advert? Is the one of the worst adverts I've ever seen. It's so obviously yeah, by like TV. a. It's absolutely shockingly terrible. No, it's just on YouTube. Oh, okay. It's um, really bad. They've tried to own Whoop Whoop as their thing. Oh, you might have seen it. It's it's gross. It's terrible. Miss. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Probably oh, the UCI. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the UCI for everything. But yeah, other than that, I just eat everything, dude. I am a I am a bin of a human. I really awesome. am. Yeah. Awesome. Good on you, mate. Well, that's it. I think that's the last episode of. Uh... No, it's not. We've got another one. We've got, we've got, we've got one in between Christmas and the, the one. Year, but the, yeah, the yeah. last one before Christmas. So I really hope everyone out there has a great Christmas. Don't forget, take a photo of your Christmas dinner. DM it to Andrew Neeflin because he loves Yeah, he loves food, them. Like... He really loves Christmas <laughs> food. He loves Christmas yeah. related food. Or just food tag him theme. in it. Yeah. And tag us in it so we can also if you want to <laughs> Also, if you want to dress up your genitalia as a Christmas character and send that to him as well, that's another thing that he, he absolutely loves it. He That is one of his passions. On his bio, he'll have like, you know, yeah. dressing genitalia, up genitalia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Up, he yeah. loves it. He just can't get enough of it. Yeah, so. <laughs> he loves it. Mm, there you yeah. go. Um, <laughs> and thank you, everyone. We appreciate you. Don't forget, subscribe to the mailing list. You're going to be in the know about new merch which might drop yeah. before christmas yeah dude yeah and also uh you're going to be on with a chance of winning an adidas terex gore-tex 510 uh winter package care package survival package right, which you saw some of it. earlier in the episode which hope you, you enjoyed yeah, yeah, yeah. there you go all right appreciate happy you. Thank christmas you. festive greetings peace and love ho 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 oh.
Fucking oh. So here we are at the end of the podcast and we would love to keep in touch with you. So don't forget, follow The Ride Companion on Instagram. It's at The Ride Companion. If you just want to follow Ollie, it's at ODUB underscore 23. And of course, here are some clips that we think you might like. And up there, you can subscribe to the channel. We'd appreciate it. We appreciate you. Thanks for watching or listening. Have a great one. Peace.